Hello and a very good morning to you. You're watching Sewing Street and my name's Debbie and we are here live for the next four hours and we've got a jam-packed morning for you this morning because in the first hour I'm going to introduce you to Janice in just a second. She's going to be showing us how to make the little girl's dress and then in the second hour, I don't know who designed these, I, don't, I just don't know where, where they came from. Um, I've got my new panels, they've been selling really busily or really busily already so um, have a look on the website on sewingstreet.com. Then it's back with Janice again Again, and she's going to show us how to make this beautiful skirt and then in the last hour I don't know what we're gonna do don't know what to do we've got we've got fabrics I've got half meters of lots of fabric but I don't know what to do so if you'd like to give me a challenge um, go onto our Facebook page which is Sewing Street not the fans page because I'm not on the fans one I'm on the Sewing Street page and I've got my phone here ready for your challenges um, or you can drop us an email which is studio at sewingstreet.com so either way let me know what I mean don't, don't be too ambitious we've only got an hour all right I'm not, not going to make a pair of curtains um, or a quilt but you know if you do uh, have any ideas or anything that you'd like to see, or a technique maybe you'd like to see demonstrated, I'm all yours, and that's in the 11 o'clock show this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like the spelling's right to me. <laughs> I've got my own graphics and everything. Do you get this on a Saturday morning? I'm not normally here on a Saturday morning. I kind of like it. I think we should have graphics for everything. Um, okay, as you have joined us nice and bright and early on this Saturday morning, we've got a special offer for you. We call this an early bird, and this time we have three Love to Sew books, but the price is for two. Now, we keep this saving as long as we have the stock or for the rest of the day, but basically you're getting one for free. And you've got a really lovely selection of books by some very talented authors. This is Debbie Von Grabler Crozier um, with La Gomme Style Accessories. So there's Debbie, she's written quite a few books. They're all search press books and the Love to Sew range are very simple instructions. But you've got low, how many projects on there? Uh, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen 18 projects in total. But they're, they're, they're really nice books for a beginner sewer because it gives you information on techniques and tools that you're going to need, but then very simple instructions for achievable projects that you can probably make within a few hours. So if you're, if you're practicing, if you want a, a quick project, if you're making gifts, if you're teaching somebody how to sew, or if you are a complete beginner, or maybe you've lost your sojo. Somebody put that on my Facebook page the other day, I lost my sojo. That, I'm, going, I'm going to take that one. Um, yeah, so they're really lovely, simple projects. Nice gift ideas as well. If you start in making, making Christmas presents. Oh, I've got a cat that looks like that. Uh, I know I said the Christmas word. It is, well, it's going to be Christmas soon, isn't it? Normally, normally in the world of shopping telly, it's in July, isn't it? No change here. So there's a, there's an idea of the kind of projects you're going to be. So that could be Christmas fabric. It doesn't have to be the Lagom style that Debbie um, created these in. Um, then we move on to Hanging Hearts. And again, still the same price, still £15.98 for the lot. Um, hanging Hearts. See, I like a Hanging Hearts myself. Um, but you wouldn't have thought there are so many different styles of hanging hearts that you can actually make. They make lovely decorations. I, I quite fancy them when they're filled with maybe a little bit of lavender or potpourri. Oh, you can keep your coins in that one. Um, I've got some coins. I've got, I've got some coins in my, crow, my cow creamer. Never thought you'd hear me say that on telly, did you? Yeah, I shall show you later. I've got, I've got sixpences and thruply bits and pennies and all kinds of things. So, uh, you have to have somewhere to keep them, don't you? Um, be a decorating, uh, maybe around a window or children's bedrooms, strings of hearts and bunting hearts. And again, you've got techniques that you can learn in here as well. I, I like that about a book. It's not just about the projects. It's about maybe learning a little bit of hand sewing or embroidery or using tools that you've never used before. Embellishing, decorating, personalising and making it all yours. Finally, we have vintage style gifts for the home. And I think the, the vintage style is the fabric that has been used, Krista. Um, because I'm thinking if you used, I don't know, black and white fabric or a very modern fabric, it wouldn't be vintage style. And I, I like that because it means that the projects are more versatile. 
So charm for the kitchen. They are pretty fabrics though, aren't they? I like, that's not, I never noticed that one before. Just, just fabric in a frame. Very effective. And those are sewn as well. Or we can change your fabric for the seasons then. So cupcakes, they give the little pink cushions. We've got quilts, cushion covers, more pink cushions, little dressmakers dummy, just covering jars and tins. And again, quick. <laughs> oh, and you could actually make a cake to keep for your birthday. That's not going to put weight on your hips, is it? So little hearts, again, there's the cake look. Quite effective, isn't it? Um, gifts for the bedroom. So this one's kind of chaptered for different areas of the house. But again, simple, easy to follow instructions and achievable projects. Those are lovely, aren't they? Um, you could put a weight in the bottom of those and have a doorstop or just a little row of them on, on your shelf or maybe pattern weights, put some of our um, recycled plastic pellets in there. Okay, so three books for £15.98. That's buy one and then buy another one and then you get one free. <laughs> You don't pay for one of them, basically. Maybe you're a collector of the Love to Sew range. There's lots of them available now. Um, they make a nice display on your bookshelf. Um, so again, £15.98 is your price there. If you'd like to order, um, you've got two ways to do that. You can go to our website, which is sewingstreet.com. When you go there, if you haven't visited before, it will be part of the Jewelry Maker website. So don't be worried about seeing Jewelry Maker there. Sewingstreet.com will bring up um, a video. If you go there now, you'll see me. Hi. And there'll be everything that we have for you in the show underneath. But there are categories that you can go and have a look at everything else that we have for you. Or you can order on the phone lines which is 0800 001 4433 and that is a free UK based um, phone line and they're very helpful people there as well so give us a call. Um, oh, we've had a message already, oh hi Dawn, she's always there bright and early, morning, I, we're quite familiar now with Dawn, she calls me our Deborah now, morning our Dawn, thank you, oh, oh a padded tray cover with box corners, there you go, Dawn, at 11 o'clock I should be making a padded tray cover with boxed corners. Um, I haven't got a tray, so we might have to wing that one a little bit, but I have got a bit of padding, I've got the fabric, might need some ribbon, could be some in my box, but yes, we should do that, that is especially for Dawn. Mm. So that's 11 o'clock sorted. Um, right, so again, if you want to get in touch, um, studio at sewingstreet.com or Facebook. Have a look on our Facebook page. I'm on the Facebook, not the fans page. And you can drop us a message, say hello, good morning. Have we got Angie from Great Yarmouth? Yarmouth? Great Yarmouth, yes. I like to tick off the register in the mornings. Not here yet, no. Have we got Leah Louise? Do we have Alan? Do we have, do we have Artie Lad? Artie Lad popped in last week and then popped out again. He did make some amazing pincushions. Have we got Jean? Hmm? I'll, uh, there'll be reprimand for those who are late, you know. <laughs> okay, lovely. It would be lovely if you got in touch and come and say hello to us this morning. Anyway, enough from me because um, we do have Janice in this hour because she's going to be making the little dress. Have a look on the website if you want to get ahead of the game because we have patterns, buttons and fabric bundles and um, we've got different colours available as well. So if you love the dress and you want to go for it, I would order now. We're going to show you a little bit more about Janice and we'll be back again in a couple of minutes. So don't go anywhere. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket.
Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. To see me back. <laughs> <laughs> My favourite piece of kiss with the sewing is the seam with that. Hello, I'm Janice from Birmingham. I specialise in dressmaking. I used to run a children's shop and I love making children's clothes. My mother encouraged me to sew from an early age. When we were young, we did dressmaking in school. My claim to fame was the sewing quarter, but I'm now making also jumpsuits for the ladies and men of all shapes and sizes and it seems to be going for the festivals around the country. See you on the show! Nanny's so they all get to meet the designer. <laughs> <laughs> Well, welcome back Hello. again. Good morning, morning, Debbie. Morning. <laughs> nice. Just got ready in time, <laughs> but there we go. Literally we just it. in time. Just in time. <laughs> right so we, we've seen a, a little bit about you on the uh, video that we just played. Yes. Um, d d just recap a little bit. How did you get into sewing? And, and, and what are you doing here? School. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was like everybody else at school. As you know, the ladies who keep watching the show and everything, they were trained like me, you know, with the tailor's tack and you know everything what? at school. We had to make our dresses. Oh, our I, I did that with a like zip this. up the front. Yeah, there in, so in I did it in a day. sucker. I didn't well. do it in that. We didn't have to do check in them days. We did denim. Really? Yeah, but I did denim You went to trendy school. school. I know. Yeah, but it was denim. <laughs> so that's what started me. Then we were tortoise. Then I did night school. And then I've just sewn all the time because my mother was a dressmaker. Oh. So... You know, you know, I hear, so, hear a lot um, from people who were learning to sew at school um, is how strict the teachers were oh, and it yeah. put you off yes. because if that seam wasn't perfect it was you yeah. know, a wrap on your knuckles and it, unpick it and do it again. And me being left-handed you try to be forced to do everything right-handed so in them days they used to make with a pen make you rock, try and write in right hand but, but with the seams what used to put people off I think was not all patterns had the 5 8 seam line, so yeah. you had to do the tailor's tacks all the way down. So to make a dress, you'd be or, or anything, you'd be doing all these thousands of tailor's tacks. If you imagine go down in an adult dress and you're having to do this, it does put you off because you do it in every single seam. And it's, it's, it does really put you off. I think and it's, um, for the beast, but at the time when I was learning on. to sew at school as well, CNA came along. CNA and Chelsea Girl. Chelsea Girl, <laughs> Chelsea Richard Girl. Shops. Yeah. Richard Shops. <laughs> they all were the filled with stuff. all the pretty things, you know. They were. Um, they so, were. yeah, the, the, when cheap fashion came in, I think that's when a lot of people just stopped sewing because yeah. it was more affordable to, to just go and yeah. buy. And it was nice to go shopping. It's, and I, I think nice that's one you know. of the reasons as well that sewing is so popular now because we realise that, hang on a minute, we can make something that fits perfectly, yeah. it'll yeah. last for longer, so I can choose my own fabrics. Yeah, and, and then one-offs, everything's yeah. one-off. Yeah. So, because a lot of the children... Like when they, people are going to the supermarkets and buying clothes, you've got all the children wearing the same clothes. Yes. And people who used to come into my children's shop used to say, oh, it's lovely to be able to have something different. Yeah. So with making things. Yeah. So, yeah. But anyway. So what are we making so in this show? We're making a dress, but I've done the skirt. So if I first of all explain what we've done here, because all it is is your side, two side pieces and your middle piece. So what I've actually done is the pockets. Now the pockets are done on the seam. I've, I've actually sewn down, used the pink and shears instead of overlocking, because not everybody's got overlockers, yeah. and pink and shears are quick yeah. as well. So done that. Then the pockets are done on the side seam. They go across the side seam. All the markings are there for you. Um, and then the little button 
just goes on the outside, so you can, can put your hands in the pockets. Can I just ask you to take your tape measure off? Yeah. Because it's rubbing on your mic. Oh, yes. <laughs> <I'm done that. laughs> so, um, so I've done the pockets on both sides. So all we, you have to do then with the skirt is gather it to the top. So oh, I haven't done that yet. I've done the actual gather stitches, So because I showed the gathering on the last show I did on how to gather. So I've, I've just thought, well, I'll just do the gathering as I'm doing the top, but I'm going to spend the time on the top at the moment because the top is lined with there's a front and the back to the top because we're going to be putting straps in the middle and it so is, that's actually it, it's lined a, with the fabric a on really the easy way to finish off the seam as well isn't it because when you think about the curve yeah. around the armhole your alternative would be binding it binding it trying to hem on a curve yes. isn't very easy yeah so if, if you're if you're brand new to sewing don't worry about yeah you lining. haven't got to worry about it's the, line. the easy yeah. way of it's doing easy it way isn't of doing it? things and it saves you doing lots of overlocking yes. on the inside yeah. or to get the nice finish on the inside. So if you line something, it's ideal for that. So, so the first thing we do, you've got your front and you've got the two sides. So the first thing we're going to do, if you look at my markings, you can just about see my markings there. So that's where you're going to be putting the buttons. So the first thing we do is we attach the two side pieces to the back piece. It's the back and the two fronts. These are the two fronts, not the two backs of it. That's it. Do you I'm have lots of machine. markings to transfer on this one and notches? There and is quite a few um, there is quite a few markings on it. So I'm already getting confused. Can you tell? <laughs> I'm already putting things wrong. See what I'm like? No, right, I'm exactly the same. Dress making is a little bit like doing a jigsaw puzzle, isn't it? You put out all of your pieces <laughs> so easy and you need to, to get put them back together again. Pieces back to front and upside down and that's it. Okay. Now I'm on a roll. <laughs> that should have given me the clue, the arm all. <laughs> so that's the first thing you're doing. It's pretty fabric as well, oh, isn't it? Oh, it's beautiful. And if you... You feel that fabric, yeah. it's got a softness to yeah. it. It's it's a poplin fabric, but it has it's got such a soft it's like almost like Like um, it's been brushed. Brushed. Yeah. It's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So what I'm going to do, five eight seam on the machine. Oh let me get rid of that. And I've always got my seam ripper here. Just to keep it in line, and we do a reverse stitch. I think with um, with dressmaking as well. If you're if you're if you're new to the world of dressmaking, children's clothes are a great way to start. Oh, they are because you haven't got the fitting that an adult's um, dress has got. You don't no. have the darts. There's <laughs> no true. you know ad adjusting the pattern. You don't do a full bust adjustment on a five year no. old. Um, <laughs> so it's it's a good way of, of of sparking an interest, if you like, yeah, in, in, in dressmaking. Because you're going to be able to make it. And you're going to see somebody wear it. Yes. And that is such a bonus at the end of it. It's um, so creative, isn't it? So. And, yeah, and it's it's nice to create something that's that's purposeful as well. You know, yes. these, are, these are gorgeous little dresses. We've had a message from Sue. Ooh. Hello, Sue. Hello, Sue. <laughs> and she says, um, oh, what a team. Two great demonstrators in at once. How's that? <laughs> Looking <laughs> forward to see what we're doing. That's Thank lovely, you, Sue. Sue. Right and the then. tray cloth sounds great. I've, got, I've had another couple on uh, on Facebook. Dawn got in there first, sorry, but I shall bear them in mind. <laughs> the tray, so we're getting ready for, to do the tray. Now, normally I would press both sides of the seams down. So I'd press this side and the other side. Okay. Okay, to make it a lovely crisp do, finish. Do you... But then... Sorry, <laughs> just go on. Do you finish your seams now, or would you cut out the pattern with pink and shears? I always do it afterwards. You do it afterwards. I've, no, I've never, because when I was taught, pink and shears went round. <laughs> so for me to get into that habit of yeah. doing the pink and shears, I always do it afterwards. Okay. So, because what I do is press them open, then 
Okay, the oh, pink and shears. Together. Then I cut the ah. cut it with the pink and shears because because you've actually pressed them open, and if you just then press that again, you will get a real good finish. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. I always press them open first before I actually pink and shear them. Okay. It's I don't know. It's, I think it, everyone's so different, aren't they? Yeah. Right then. So then you've got your two top pieces together. Okay, so then what you do, on the one, you turn over five eighths, see, on the end, because that's where you're going to, on the inside, once it's gathered, on the other seam, you're going to fold it over and, you know what I'm saying? Cover the, the gathered edge yeah. on the inside. So, oh, okay. <laughs> so what we do then, we get the straps, which we've made earlier again and we're going to attach the straps. So with the straps, all you do, fold them in half, machine down and down the side, trim it, turn it and then press. And the way I press again is I, I press open the seam, I can't do it now, I always press on that seam first to get another crisp finish and then I do the ending like that. Okay. Yeah, but then also, if you want a real good tip for getting the seams out, if you have trouble, just go in with a needle into the seam, like so, pull it through, get the two pieces of cotton and pull. You know what I'm doing? That and is amazing. Through. And that's what you, I've not did that because I wanted Je to do some Genesis tapping. top tip there. That's a top tip. Not seen that before. Okay, so again, I'll show you again quickly. Go into the seam with a double thread, pull it through, grab the other piece of cotton and pull. And that will pull your seam mate. And that's another. Okay. Always a school day, isn't it? <laughs> Not seen that before. Everybody's got different things yeah. that they pick up. Yeah. But that on seams is great. If you, you know, for skirts, if adult clothes and everything. Yeah, and the other th tip I have is if you want to undo stitching, if you've gone wrong and you want to undo stitching, you get your seam ripper and say you want to undo that, you put your seam ripper in there and break it. Every so often, pull your seam, break it, break it, break it. Go to the other side and that cotton will just pull away. And oh, then you haven't got all the little tiny bits. Instead of you thinking, oh, I've got to pick that. And, yeah. <laughs> That's another tip. You might have seen that one before. I haven't seen that one before. <laughs> so then what we do, you've got your straps. So with the rough edge of the straps, the raw edge, you have your markings to put the strap. And if you look at the marking on the black, that's where it's going to go. So we've just put the wonder clip in there. And with that one, pop a wonder clip in there. And then what you're going to do is just tack or baste. I always call it tacking instead of basting. Basting's an American term, isn't Word, it? Yeah. Yeah. It's no, uh, I'm a tacker. It's a tack. Yeah. But, and a lot of women do. Tacker, not attacker. Attacker. <laughs> <laughs> but I have my moments, I have to say. <laughs> yeah, just, just don't cross me. So we're just now basting that down, just to hold it down. You can do it on the machine. I don't know which is quicker, either. Really. I mean, it's just a little... I'd, I'd do it on the machine. Would you? Because it, is it and quicker? I, I don't do tailor sacks. I use marking pens. See, I'm not a marker pen. This is this yeah. isn't the thing that a lot of the ladies watching. They're all saying, "Tell us, tags, tell us, tags." <laughs> <laughs> but again, it's how you're trained, yeah. isn't it? It's because yeah. it was John who says to me um, on the other show about doing it on the machine, and I thought, "Well, I've never done that on the machine." Yeah. No, I'd always have. I won't do that. Mum used to use chalk, chalk markers. Tailor's chalk. Yeah. Tailor's chalk and that. Yeah. Okay. We've, uh, we've had a question about the seam allowance. It's, um, it's five eighths on it's the five stress. eighths of an inch, isn't it? And it's included in the pattern. Yeah. 
shows you on the pattern. See, that surprised me because a lot of children's um, a lot of children's clothes are normally three eight seams. That really shocked me that dear when it was five eight. Yeah. Uh, so these straps can go on anyway, but now I'm going to do this on the machine. <laughs> should they be on so the other both. should they be on the other side? Yes. <laughs> so I didn't, <laughs> didn't want you to have to get the unpicker out. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. It's talking, isn't it? It's like lethal. <laughs> <laughs> talking and sewing at the talking same time. Talking and sewing it's, at the same time. It's a challenge. Challenge, Annika. <laughs> challenge, Annika. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's oh. challenge Debbie now, isn't it? It is. <laughs> so I'll just do the basting stitch. Had a few. To the end. Um, suggestions. Please, could you make a phone case for someone with limited hand function? That's from Sandra. Um, that's... Uh, I think that should be a proper project. Um, I think we should do that. Morning, Debbie. Can you show how to make a clasp purse? Really enjoying the show. Um, I guess I need to bring a clasp in to show you that one. So maybe next. I mean, on Tuesday, maybe we can fit that into something on Tuesday. Um, I'm gonna. I need to refresh. I, I'm all over the place this week. I'm normally Sunday and Monday. I don't know. I don't know why I'm not in on Monday. I forgot. I must have swapped with somebody for some reason or other. <laughs> Um, if there are any more suggestions, then do, do come and let me know. We shall aim to please. Right then, so, thank you Debbie for that. <laughs> so then what you do, you get your top, and now we're going to attach all around the lining. Can I stop you again? Yeah. Should you have some straps on? Yes, it is there. Not doing very well, so don't mind. So there's one it on the front is. and one on the back? Yeah. Not doing very well, so don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> You were, uh, you, Janice was so rushed oh this morning. It's there. Um, Maybe it is. It's because there. you were under the impression you were on at nine o'clock. Yeah. So literally came into the studio um, to be told, would you like to go and get a cuppa? Uh, you, you know, you've got about, <laughs> you got about three quarters of an hour. I, just, oh, I thought it was on the nine. Um, so I think you're doing very well to have got everything there, <laughs> ironed everything, dressed the set with the, with the things as well. So don't That's... worry about it. Because <laughs> normally, before you go on air, you're normally sitting outside studying what you're going to talk about <laughs> yeah no no chance to do that this morning this this is the deep end and janice was thrown into it i was thrown in the deep end two weeks ago and i said you presented as well because <laughs> <laughs> the presenter never turned up <laughs> oh that's it because it's because it's so long since i made the dress you forget <laughs> oh i i do that all the time um or i'll have a question from somebody who says uh oh well, you know when you like, when you made that bag, how did you do this? I don't know. I can't, I can't <laughs> remember. Can't remember. But you wrote the pattern. I know. Still can't remember. It's true, isn't it? Right. Now, let's just... And, of course, we don't have the patterns in front of us to double-check, do we? No. You've always got the pattern in front of you at home. So, just thinking now. You do have the, um, the, the complete bundle, by the way. Um, so there's two metres of fabric, which is plenty. And the dress pattern is um, height-wise um, from 100 and 114 to 140 centimetres. Um, Sorry for turning back. 40, 45. I can't see a thing. I think I think I've got frosty um, uh, contacts in this morning. I'm all, I'm all <laughs> fuzzy. Uh, 45 to 55 inches in height. Um, there is a picture of the the back of the pattern on the website on sewingstreet.com. It's not available on its own at the moment. It does come to you with the choice of four fabrics. So have a look there. And we're going to throw the buttons in for you as well. Oops. But you've got plenty of fabric. There is plenty of fabric. Right, now also on the side seams, we're just attaching the front two tops front and back together. I'm using wonder clips. I love wonder clips because they don't mark the fabric. <laughs> it's they are that's one thing I really like. So what I do to for the side seams stick a pin in 
then go through the side seam of the other side. Normally again these would all be pressed open. So you go into the other side and up just to make sure that the side seams are bang on. And you're just pinning all the way. Well, not pinning, wonder clipping. <laughs> I don't know how to say that for sure. No, wondering. <laughs> Because in the camp they're called bulldog tips. Call them what? Bulldog, bulldog tips. Bulldog tips, yes. <laughs> Keep calling them bulldog <laughs> tips before. Then on the other one, another pin. Was it, is it very different working with the gingham to cotton fabric? I tried to, I tried to match the seams so that the stripes went yeah. down. Um, this fabric is not, it's because the bunny rabbits are all different ways, you haven't got to worry about it being the right way up and everything. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, because you can go either way. Um, but you do have to be careful with some dresses on that and getting the, the more facing up the right way yeah. and things like that and straps as well. You, you try and make them so that the straps say when the, the fabric's up, the pattern's going down. Well, it, it's 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 all according what fabric you're using, isn't it? Whereas this one is quite easy with the bunnies because they're all, they're all upside down, back to front, and all yeah. the way, always. So, so all I'm doing now is going around here. Whoop. <laughs> <laughs> Good job you wasn't there, Dips. <laughs> and then all I'm doing. Now it's just going to go down the sides as well. And then we're just going to machine down, machine up and all around 5 eighths in. Now also keep to the 5 eighths line because when you get into dressmaking you realise why there's always the 5 eighths seam and the way things fall properly and things with the 5 eighths. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So there's always a reason why. You know, so that's that. So we're going to go round. Oh, sorry, I've moved that. I shouldn't have done. <laughs> <laughs> I just do it automatically. <laughs> Wherever you're comfortable. <laughs> so again, just the five eights. So when we get our new studio, we're well, going to have we're going to have thirty cameras. Thirty, yeah, oh, at least, <laughs> at least. Um, and we're going to get real close-ups on the sewing machine as we're sitting down sewing. Uh, it's been delayed a little bit at the moment because they're building the gym and the ice arena. <laughs> We've already got the champagne bar, that's, that's in the bag. <laughs> the ice arena. Oh, and it's, uh, apparently a steam room, having a steam room as well. Really? Yeah, 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 all this, yeah. <laughs> steam I'm room. having a butler. <laughs> mm. If only. Mm. In your dreams. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Now I must admit, it's the first time I've met Debbie and I, I've made it, like I was saying, I've made your bags, I've known that and it's, I didn't realise what a talented lady she was with everything she does. Oh, carry on. <laughs> carry on and you can be the diva. <laughs> yeah. There's enough divas We're in We're going to have industry. really wide doors in the new studio to fit my head through. <laughs> Now, another thing I do, I don't always, I don't just go round and then go, do you know what I mean? I yeah. always like to have a nice finish there and then start again and go round. Okay. I've always done that as well. It takes a bit longer, but I think you get the better finish, if you know what I'm saying. Down we go again. Where's my seam ripper? Another the camera. We have done. It. That's it. <laughs> I'm the seam ripper. So what are you doing with the seam ripper? I just hold it down. You see, the night. Well, I, I swear by with the seam ripper, it can it can get into places your fingers can't. Oh, your fingers okay. can only get to there, but this can get right in and hold it down. It's just, I think the seam ripper is one of the best tools that was ever invented, because it it you can push and hold fab. See, like if you get a little bit of a crease there, you can just shove it out with the seam ripper. Yeah. And go. See, to me, the seam ripper is brilliant. I've lost that pin now. I took it out and lost it. Don't you find as well, when, 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 when we started sewing in 1840... <laughs> no, 
<laughs> we call them seam rippers. They call them quick and picks these days. What do they the call them? Quick, quick and picks. Really? Hmm. They seem to have changed names. Why? Oh, why do they change names? <laughs> With the old Snickers bar and yeah, yeah, the marathon. Now the marathon, I know. Spangles, what's up yeah. to Spangles? What happened? Spangles. They turned into opal fruits. I know. <laughs> All the old things, you can't beat them, and I think, oh, you know, why? Why do? Why did they do this? It's absolute crazy. Nice. Down we go again. Hold it down, I'm just now going to go a bit faster. I'm worried about going faster sometimes. I think, let's haste more speed. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good saying, that, isn't it? See, the seam if you just hold seams while you can do other things with your hands. It's about multitasking. <laughs> You must have spent an awful long time making children's clothes if you had a the shop. Had yeah. the shop. Yeah. No, I, I enjoyed it. Oh, and the children that used to come into the shop, they were lovely. They were so sweet. Aww. And the nice thing about my shop was where it was, I had a, a fish pond outside the front door as part of the complex. And I used to hold fish food. And we used to go off and feed the fish. Aww. And you'd get the children going, feed fish, feed the fish. <laughs> <laughs> I used to love it, loved it. I love children though. <laughs> I think they're wonderful. Because they rely on you so much, don't they? Yeah. They, they're so lovely children. I'm collecting grandchildren at the moment. Oh, you have yeah. you got? I've got, I've got two so far and one on the oh, way. Oh, and one on the way. Mm. When's mm. the baby due? November. Oh, oh how lovely. <laughs> November. Oh, but you can't wait. I, I, I do feel like they're all mine. No, they're, <laughs> my You'll kids just have children for me. <laughs> you end up babysitting. I don't care. Oh. Bring on the summer holidays. I love it. That's it. You can't beat it, can you? <laughs> Is he talking? If you, I forget what I'm doing. <laughs> right, last bit, and then we've got to turn it. But we've got to trim it down first. So I've now gone all the way round. So we just undo it, again with the seam ripper, leave it there. So then, so I've sewn down across, round the arms, across and round the arms and down the back. So now what you do, get the scissors and we trim it down. Now you'd normally as well put, pull the tailor's tacks out and so at this stage. Do you want some left-handed scissors? I'll be okay. We haven't got some. I know. I know we've got some. There we go. <laughs> That's lovely. So again, it's a lot easier. Just to take away the bulk. And here, what we normally do is just clip into the stitching, but make sure you don't go into the stitching. Because on the curve, we just clip it into it. Across the top, just trim it again. They're quite nice, these scissors. They're very, you can handle them better, can't yeah. you? It's I, I bought um, a pair of left-handed scissors by mistake a few years ago. Oh, did you? And it actually hurts. So for you, as, as a lefty, using right-handed scissors when you need to. But we had to use right-handed. I've always, I've always used right-handed. We, I don't think know. it's good enough. No, no. I'm going to stamp my feet. I think we should have, <laughs> have left-handed no, shears. I've, I've never I've, seen those. I normally use left-handed scissors on the show. I have to get rid of my mess. See, those are, for, those are for paper. What, what ones then? Are yes. <laughs> what, what are we doing to our guests this morning? <laughs> right, so I've gone down there, gone down there. The counter's too high. Right, so now... <laughs> <laughs> I'm on a it's because I'm just to small. <laughs> so now what we do, we're going to turn it. Okay. Going to turn it. Right, right. We have, we have um, 
So, excuse me, going backwards and forwards. It was, so for some reason on Facebook, it doesn't automatically refresh. So I know you've got messages coming through. And uh, Karen, hi Karen, she says, a long time ago, um, but I remember my needlework teacher as really helpful. I made a pair of yellow tartan Bay City Rollers trousers <laughs> and can still see them in my mind's eye. Luckily, no photos. Oh, <laughs> our, our producer Kat has just said, what are Bay City Roller trousers? The Bay City, <laughs> Bay City oh, Rollers. Oh, gosh, Kat. Heartthrobs, <laughs> but they were um, Oxford they were bags. Oxford bags, didn't they? But short. Yeah. So you could see stripy socks and platform shoes. So <laughs> really wide, rollers. big turnips, checks. I, I know. <laughs> um, so we, 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 can, we can let you have some yellow gingham, oh, okay. Karen, if, if, if you want to recreate the look. The Bay City Rollers. Oh, very funny. I wasn't a fan myself. No, I wasn't. I was into Donny Osmond's. Oh, were you? See, I was Mark Bolan. Oh, were you? Mm. Mm. Oh, no, I liked him. Mm. Um... I didn't mind a bit of David Cassidy. But yeah. I preferred Mark Bolan. Oh, yeah. David Cassidy. <laughs> oh. oh, you've got little hearts in your eyes now. I oh, know, David <laughs> Cassidy. I'm just wondering now where I did the gathering. The gathering, I did. The gathering, I did it. No, I've done it back, a bit back to front because I wanted to show them that finished as well. But, I, so. I think I was probably talking all over the top of that, so I do apologise. <laughs> do you want to show us the, the finished one again? So, the finished at the moment, so again, and that's when it's going to be like that. Right. If you can see. Okay. That's the top. But normally, before you do the top, you add... You, you do this bit first, right. but I wanted to try and get them to show them how to do the lining more because once you, in fact, I might still do that. <laughs> so what you do then with the top, again, you can either use your seam ripper or your thread puller to pull the seams out. But with a seam ripper, just be careful that you don't rip it. Yeah. Really. So, but again, also, what I would always do is sew the seams open as much as I could on that side before you trim it. Yeah. So, what I would do normally is open that out, press it, press the other side as far as you can go up into there with your iron so that you get the Could crispness. you use um, a clapper? A what? The, one of the wooden like anvil things, yeah. so you can get right in there you, and then you, press you it can that use way them as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, what, what's the other name for them? I used to use them a lot. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I can't think of the name of them. But <laughs> yeah, I can't. The name's gone. Oh, it was called them a clapper. What were they called? I don't know the name of them clappers as well, weren't they? I can't think of the name of them. We've got them on the website. <laughs> we'll have to look it up. They used to be check, a red and black check. Oh, the hams. The hams. Yeah. Thinking of the hams. Now, there is all tailors tax in here, so normally you take all them out. So, <laughs> as you all know, no, my tailor tacking friends. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot out there. They're a little bit lost in the pattern. Though, I had so. so many interesting people on about tailors tackers and school and... Oh, memories or what. And I'd love to have replied to some of them, but my internet's been down for a week at home and Sky actually came yesterday and put me all, all across the road. It was a major problem. Oh. And it took them a week to come and do it. And I haven't been able to Skype my brother or nothing in Canada because my brother lives in Canada. And I haven't been able to Skype him or nothing. It's been so annoying because I'd like to have responded to them. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't have time when I get to work. I go into accountant mode, boarding, and switch off. So that's how you do the lining. Okay, and that's the way the straps are done. So, because I know we're always against the clock. So <laughs> I try and do. We've as got much about five minutes. Can. That's what I mean. We're always <laughs> against the clock. Because I always try and do as much as I can. You know, it's. It's like you challenging in an hour, yeah. what you can make in an hour, it's not a lot, is it really? Hang on. <laughs> Such a shame. 
I can't, so is that a machine to the, um, stitch that you're pulling there? You haven't done that I've done them you? twice. You do, you do the machine stitching, you do it on a bigger stitch as well, like a five, and then you have to turn the sides in first, twice, where the yep. button hole's going to do it. Interface down the side, so it stiffens it, stiffen that, another name we used to call it. And then you gather all down the whole lot. That's having a bit of trouble pulling that, so I just want to quickly wonder clip this so that we can I can just try and show them what it will look like quickly. Hang on. That's the side, that's the side. I'm rushing now. <laughs> don't do it, does it to rush? I just want to get them to see yeah. what the dress is going to be like. It's, it does come together very quickly, though, it's doesn't it? It's ever such a quick dress. It's easier than what you think. Yeah. Side seams, again, use your pins, ladies, to make sure they're right. I can just quickly... And the, um, even with the, the, the buttons and the buttonholes down the front as well, Yeah. that's... That's not as difficult as you may think. No, no, again, buttonholes, there's 15 different types of buttonhole on my machine. And buttonholes, they, they do it more perfect now every time. Buttonholes, you used to dread it years ago, having to do a buttonhole. I remember having um, a, a but buttonhole no. attachment on one of our first sewing machines. It was a big yeah. grey thing with a knob on the top. It yeah. was a bit like a, a huge walking foot. <laughs> but you dreaded doing buttons, yeah. didn't you? Yeah. And when I saw the buttons, I thought, oh no, no but my machine is wonderful. So I shouldn't worry about my machine. Right, I'm just gonna, I'm going to click this. Now, I'll quickly hold it up. That, then, once you've done that, you've sewn that on, you fold that in, and that's your inside finish. So then, that on the front will go like that, that will go like that, and then that, will be what this one's like. You can <laughs> see, I'm just trying to show them the way it would be. Oh, you want to make a bigger pockets. size, don't you? <laughs> so, isn't it lovely? It's a really, it's lovely. really the pretty dress. The fabric is beautiful. You can't, I must say, the fabrics I choose for the, sh for the show, the feel of the fabrics. If you have a good fabric, it makes itself. Yes. And there's a lot to be said for that. You buy cheap fabric, you've got to have quality. Yeah. Well, and you get the, the quality without the expense here, don't we? And it will wash and wash and wash and wash and wash and wash. Yeah. Every time. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for that. We're going to see you right. again in just over an hour with the skirt the behind skirts. you as well. Yeah. Yeah. And a, a smile on her face. You love that <laughs> fabric, don't you? Yeah. That is beautiful. That yeah. hangs absolutely fabulous. The only negative thing with that's the hem. <laughs> Because you literally, it's one of them skirts that you can go woo, and it all goes woo. With what you. should we do doing this at 10 o'clock? <laughs> <laughs> with sound effects. <laughs> so, um, we shall see you again in a couple of minutes. I'll take you through all of the different uh, fabric bundles that we have for you, or you can have a look on the website right now. Here's how. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping.
Right, now the bundles that we have for you, better take you through these, hadn't I? Um, this is the white bunnies that uh, Janice was using. So, there's your dress pattern. There's a whole pack of buttons for you as well. Obviously, if you want to change colours or anything and use your own, that's fine. Then you've got some spare ones. Um, and you've got two metres of fabric as well. And Janice is right, this is a really lovely fabric. Let me just check the width on this one because it should be 140 centimetres. I'm going to open it up. I'll never get this folded back up again. So we have... hundred and forty centimetres wide and two metres in length so you've got a really well a, a lot of fabric there you, I'm sure you're going to have some left over particularly if you're going to go for the smaller sizes of the dress all for 24 pounds and 99 pence which is an amazing price it's a lovely quality um, like Janice is saying with children's clothing particularly they're probably just a one wear before they go in the wash so there'll be a lot of washing going on it's a nice style of dress as well um, thinking um, trans seasonal because come winter time, you can always put t-shirts and cardigans with it. And I think that would look really sweet with, um, with a pair of rib tights as well. So it's a, it's a summer dress, but something that you can certainly take throughout the year as well. No reason why you couldn't make a Christmas dress out of that. I've got Christmas on my mind today. I don't know why. So that's the bunnies on white. <laughs> that was very badly folded. Sorry about that. Then we have the bunnies on, on duck egg. Um, do you know what might be nice if you're going to make a few you could put the two of them together and maybe have the top um, have, the, have the, um, the bodice in one and then straps and skirt in another and then you've got another dress the same but the other way around if that makes sense or if you wanted just to go for the fabric on its own, these are available by the half metre as well. So if you're in want a metre, if you've got something else in mind, you've already got your pattern, you want to make a cushion cover or a little quilt, you can buy these by the half metre. Um, but here, oh, you could, you probably have some left over, you know, if you wanted to make a matching hat. Can't see a thing. Can't see a thing. But have a look on the website. Um, and the back of the packaging is on there. So I've given you the heights um, from, um, was it 45 to 55 inches? But if you want, you know, the chest measurements and the exact lengths and how much fabric you need for each size, then take a look on sewingstreet.com and that will give you all of the details. Unless you just want to zoom in there. <laughs> um, with buttons for 24 pounds and 99 pence. I'm very good at zooming, I'm panning. Yeah, we don't need camera operators. We have the checked version. So this is the blue check um, with the little dress that Johnny's made here. So same deal. You have the uh, two metres of fabric and the buttons and the pattern. This time at £19.99 is your price there. And it's a proper gingham. I like a gingham. It is... Uh, a gingham's a, a woven fabric, so you know that the check is actually on the grain because it is the grain because that's the way that it's been woven. Um, so when you're cutting out, the, the skirt from this dress is rectangles, so if you cut along the stripe you know that you've got it right. And it's easy to pattern match like this as well. Um, the hem's straight on it, there's no curves or anything, so again you can cut straight across the, across the line. Never trust a print. Printed checks and stripes may not be exactly 100% vertical and horizontal, but with a gingham, you can. Um, so that's the blue. And the blue is available by the half metre as well. Take a look on the website. Um, the red is only available in the bundle. We've sold out this morning of all the half metre lengths that were left. So only available with the pattern and the buttons. And that again is £19.99. And so the, the patterns are all the same for all of those four options. It's just the, and the buttons, it's just the, um, uh, the fabric that is different. We also have a yellow and a fuchsia option. So these again, by the half metre, um, these I think are 112 wide. Um, it's a nice quality as well. It's a good weight. So if you wanted to use this for kitchen items, um, maybe you're making tablecloths or curtains and things like that. And that at £3.99 is an amazing price. But there again, if you go for an extra half a metre, maybe with the red, you could have the pockets and the straps in a different colour. Maybe you could make the bodice or maybe put a frill around the bottom. 
because then no stopping you there, is there? So that's the yellow. We also have a fuchsia option, which is this one. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I normally ignore comments like that, but I've just said, will this be available in the future? At least it wasn't a back to the future joke. Huh? That was Paul, our director. Chipping in. Um, £3.99 for your half metre there. So again, by the half metre means that if you wanted to go for a metre, they'll come joined up. So if you needed two metres, if you wanted to make another dress and you need the full two metres, then um, order four units and it'll come to you all joined up in one big long piece. Um, we've got loads of buttons on the website as well. The, the packs or the bundles come with buttons. If you want different, maybe a novelty button, maybe a B button. Um, we do have them on the website as well. So if you go to sewingstreet.com, take a look in the categories and then there'll be, a, I think there's a haberdashery section. You'll find lots of buttons there as well. We've got a 3.95 postage for the whole of the day. So if you order and then you think, oh, I'm, I do need a button. I don't want to pay another £3.95 for postage for, for a button. Um, we're not going to charge you any extra for any more uh, orders that you place throughout the whole of the day all the way through to midnight tonight. So if you see something that you like, order it and pay for it and make sure it's yours because we do have very busy shows here on Sewing Street. And then if you come back and think, I, I, I only want a quick on pick, I want a, a packet of clover clips or some pins and needles, feel free to come back for the whole of the rest of the day and we won't ask you for any more postage. So, okay, so 800 001 4433 if you'd like to place your order on the phone. Just going to get ready for my next show. Have a look on the website. My famous cows <laughs> are coming up in the next hour and I've got an idea how you can make these stretch even further. So have a look on the website if you want to go through an order. Now they're available in the cup of colour options. Um, otherwise, I shall see you again in just a couple of minutes. Ta da Hi there. My name's Alison Marion and I'm thrilled to be joining the Sewing Street family. I live in Staffordshire where I run a couple of sewing groups and I have a passion for vintage sewing machines and also applique. I've stitched in some form for as long as I can remember, but I absolutely love teaching and helping people stretch their skills and hopefully demystifying some of the techniques that can be quite daunting for beginners. So I'm looking forward to meeting the team and getting into the studio. See you soon. Hello there, I'm Debbie Shaw and I would love you to join me on the first Monday of every single month for Sewing Street Surgery. Now this is a dedicated hour where I answer your questions and that could be questions about techniques, it could be questions about tools, it could be questions about new products or maybe something that you've seen that you just don't understand. There's a lot of questions about tensions on sewing machines and there's a lot of questions about working with different weights of fabrics. So if you have a question that you'd like to ask me, the easiest way to to bring a question over to us is to go to our Facebook page and post your question on there. I will collate all of those questions throughout the week. If we need any new products for you or if we need any new demonstrations, those will all be worked on leading up to that first Monday of the month. So do join me, Debbie Shaw, on Sewing Street Surgery on the first Monday. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. That's the same me <laughs> My baby piece of kiss with the sewing is the same me Hello, I'm Janice from Birmingham. I specialise in dressmaking. I used to run a children's shop and I love making children's clothes. My mother encouraged me to serve from an early age. When we were young, we did dressmaking in the school. My claim to fame was the sewing quarter, but I'm now making also jumpsuits for ladies and men of all shapes and sizes and it seems to be going for the festivals around the country.
Hello, I'm Kerry from Living in Loveliness and I'm delighted to be part of the Sewing Street team. I'm based in Wolverhampton and I absolutely love working with fabulous fabrics. In particular, I love working with fat quarters and showing you how to get the most from your scraps. I love bringing communities of sewists together and encouraging people to sew for greater causes. Most recently, we have been sewing for our NHS and key workers. Um, I look forward to bringing you hints, tips and techniques. I'll see you soon. Hello, my name is Fiona Hesford and I'm founder of Sew Girl. I'm based down in Worthing on the south coast of England. And I've got a range of sewing patterns which I've developed over the last few years which are projects for loose fitting clothing, everyday, simple garments, things that I really love to wear myself. And I'm going to be bringing you them to Sewing Street over the next few months. So I look forward to seeing you then. Bye. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalog by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. Would you like to take part in our weekly competition? If you do, then all you have to do is head to the Sewing Street fan page group on Facebook. Post your picture of your make. Myself, Debbie Shaw and John Cole Morgan love looking at all of your makes every week. We pick our favourite and announce the winner every Friday live on the show. Happy sewing and good luck. Hi there, welcome back again. You're watching Sewing Street and my name is Debbie Shaw. And in this hour, we've got something brand new for you. Um, and this is, uh, I'll show you, this is something that is really close to my heart and something that's been in the pipeline for quite a long while. Um, I have a collection of cow creamers. This is a, a very small part or a very small selection of my cow creamers. They're not all cow creamers. Um, but they, um, <laughs> they're just so funny. That I, I love them. They hang, they hang up in my kitchen and I just thought it would be a wonderful, look at that one, she looked aloof. Um, I thought they would look wonderful on fabric. So, so it's taken a long time to actually do this, but I've chosen my favorite ones. And uh, these six are the stars of the show. Oh, there, there's lots more kind of dotted around the set as well. And I've got lots more at home as well. And. <laughs> We've got to get a move on, apparently. So, my husband, uh, Gary, has photographed them all. These are then taken to Tom, who's a designer, and he digitizes everything and transforms said cow photograph into fabric. And what I love about what he's done with this as well, there are some panels that I've taken the elements of the flowers on the cow, I'll show you that later on, that's a different panel, and just made that into fabric, so it's just the flowers. So there she is, look. <laughs> um, they, this started actually with this little lady here. Um, this belonged to my mum's grandma. So she's very old and um, She's broken and her tail's been Evo sticked back together again and everything. But my, and she's, look, all of her, all of her 
patterns worn off there as well. Um, but my my mum had this in a corner cupboard in her living room for most of her life. Um, and she was giving it to her grandma and she was told to be very, very careful with it because it was special to her. So I don't know what the story behind that was. So that was my first one. And then you'll, you'll go to an antique shop or you'll see a gift store and think, oh, there's another cow. That's similar to the one that I've got. I'll buy that one. And then you buy another one. Then you'll see another one. And then people don't know what to buy you for Christmas and birthdays. So you end up with a whole selection of cows. I have a herd in my kitchen, but it was all down to that little lady to start with. So they're all very different. So they're not all workable, but they've all got a story behind them as well. And now they're here for immortality. So let me show you the colours that we have first of all and what you're actually going to get, because that would be useful, wouldn't it? So you're going to be able to make a tea cosy with a pretty lining. That's the fabric made out of the flowers on the cow that i just shown you. And you don't kind of see that, do you? So you could make another one and use your own fabric for a lining. There is a pot holder, and again, that's double-sided, but if you used your own fabric, you could make two. And then you've got a pair of oven mitts. So that's, that's that. <laughs> that's that one there, look. Oh, I know, they're so cute. Um, and this one, this is a funny one as well. She's just, she looks a bit dim, doesn't she, that one? She's not, not quite in the field, that one. Hello. <laughs> so that's there. So you're able to make oven gloves and you've got the checked lining on the back there as well. So I'm thinking if you have your own fabric and we've got some that match as well, you could make another one out of gingham. The inside of the pockets have got lining on them. You're never going to see that. So you could put your own fabric in there and, um, and make another set. Um, make another one of those with your own fabric on the back. You will need more bias binding. And then you can make another tea cosy with the floral and put your own lining on the inside. So this is the actual panel. This is the green. This has been your favorite so far. There's so many of these gone already. I'm so pleased you like it. I just, I love cows anyway, they're so, oh, they've got eyelashes and they're gentle, aren't they? We love cows. So here you go. It's huge. I'll, I'll sh oh, shall I pan up and down? <laughs> so you will have, I can't see what I'm doing there now. Um, all of the different um, pieces are labelled. Um, you get your full instructions as well, the photographic instructions, but they are all labelled. This is a premium quality cotton as well. I, I was rather fussy about the cotton that was used, so you've, you've got the best one. Um, and you've got a few extras on here as well. So, for instance, let me just whiz this round. I'll have a good old look. That, so much bubble wrap this morning. I'd be devastated if anything happened to these girls. Right, so let's start at the top. This is Daisy, Dorothy and Penelope. I didn't name them. I'm not taking the credit for that, but they're perfect names. That was uh, Tom who designed, uh, the designer who came up with that. And I think that is such a lovely name. Um, so here, I don't know, which, I don't know which one's which, um, but there's a loof and my original little one and then we've got that one as well so those are those are the three ladies here as you come down you've got the um the oven mitt hand bits <laughs> that's your tea cozy over here we've got an extra piece of applique so that's just to fill in the space because we wanted to get the best value for money out of these panels. And you've got a handmade with love little lining there as well. Um, and again, all of these are labelled, the writing's on there. But you do have your full instructions on here as well. Very simply explained, as, as, I, as I tend to. And lots of photos as well. So that's those. So that's the green. And, oh, and, and it's not just this. I'll, now, I'll never be able to fold this one back up again. As these are um, kitchen items that you're going to make, we do recommend that you use a thermal wadding. So we're putting that in the kit as well. 
So this is your thermalam. So this is an insulating an insulating wadding, um, which is designed to keep the heat in or away or the cold in or out actually as well. Um, so definitely on your oven gloves you're going to need to put it on this side you can put a couple of layers there on if you're if you're concerned i have put it on the on the glove part as well you don't need to really with that one you could make this go a little bit further and use h640 on that side if you wanted to but definitely again inside your pot holder and in your tea cozy as well and just to show you how much you're getting it's all of that so you should hopefully have a little bit left over so that's the green also have the pink, so you've got the same same deal, um, same items that you can make, but this time in the pink, which is the one that I've got made up here actually. So I shan't open the whole panel out because I'll never get it folded back again. Oh, why not? There we go. Um, these are um, bias binding strips, so they are on a 45 degree angle. You'll have a little bit of that left over, but there's a lot of bias binding because um, it's on all of the items. So it's all the way around the oven glove. It's around the bottom of the tea cosy and it's all the way around the pot holder as well. So there is quite a lot there. Um, this time we have um, this little one as your applique, as your spare one. I might... Um, I might think of something to make with her later on. So that's that one. And what have we called this? these ones? Uh, Bessie, Clarabelle and Betty Sue. I think that's Betty Sue. She just looks like a Betty Sue. <laughs> but isn't it clever how... I mean, I'm not taking the credit for that. I did, I did ask. <laughs> and I'm not saying I'm clever. Um, but to take the, um, the photograph of the cow, which is there, and then just lift off the flowers and make a fabric with it. I thought that was a really nice idea and it's worked so well and it's absolutely perfectly, well it's the same isn't it? So, again that's £34.99 in full instructions and that huge panel and your thermal lamp is all included. Um, what I would do as well when you cut the pieces out is maybe draw around them um, on a piece of trace or paper or something and then you've got the pattern there so you can make as many as you like in other fabrics as well. So feel free to do that. We've got more, we've got more panels. So if you love the designs but you don't want to make a tea cosy oven gloves and a pot holder, we've made a panel now. There was method in my madness with this one. Oh, this is big, look at this. So you've got a long panel with the cows on and then you've got the six squares and you've got your check and the flowers on the end there as well. And originally this was going to be an apron panel because this is what this has been made out of. Uh, obviously in the, in the other colour option. So that's the long panel and then one of the squares is a pocket and then one of the other flor floral strips there is a strap and the other one is a checked one around the back there. But then I thought, you know, an apron is made basically from just a big rectangle of fabric. Maybe you don't want to make an apron. Maybe you want to make a table runner. Um, or maybe you want to, I don't know, make a little girl's dress. Maybe you want to make um, uh, storage holders. You know, it doesn't have to be an apron. So that's why you're not getting instructions for an apron because you can make what you like with it. I'm kind of thinking with the squares, that would make a nice table runner and use some of the check and the, fl the flowers as um, a sashing in between. Um, but you could make a really nice storage box out of those. If you've got some firm interfacing or foam interfacing would work really well. And you've got a really decent sized box there um, with a lid with the amount of panels that you've got. Or you could just join those together to make a table runner. Or you could make them a little bit bigger by putting a board around them and make them into um, placemats. You've got six really decent sized placemats there. And then make a table runner. So I'm thinking all things kitcheny because that's where my cows are and that's what it reminds me of. But you could have, you can make cushion covers out of them. There could be things for outdoors, maybe. And remember, you've got a superior quality of cotton with these. It's a really lovely quality cotton. So all designed and 
printed in the UK and exclusive to Sewing Street as well. So I, I have, I've got them on my website. They're not available anywhere else. They're not in John Lewis's or Selfridges or Harrods or any of They can't have them. They keep banging on the door saying, can we have your panels there? And nope, nope, these are exclusive to Sewing Street. Um, so you won't find those anywhere else. And we have a pink option here as well. So this is the one that I used for the apron. And, oh no, 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 that's the wrong one, isn't it? That's the tea cosy one. Panels, panels everywhere. Here we are. So they're the same um, prints as the, as the tea cosy panels. So if you did want to make things to coordinate with them, maybe, oh, come on down there. If you're... Um, maybe making a toaster cover or something to cover at the Kenwood Chef. If you want extra things, you're like, I need more than oven gloves, tea cozies and pot holders, then you can, you can make your own with these panels. So again, that's the, uh, the pink option. That's only £19.99. And you know, there's so much work gone into these and it's taken so long to actually bring them to you. And there has been a lot of going backwards and forwards until we get them absolutely perfect. Um, and I'm, I'm really pleased with them. I can't wait to see what you're going to make with them and what ideas you have. Ooh, right. If you do want um, your fabric to go a little bit further, we have the silver. This tones really nicely. So if you wanted to make um, more of your tikka, you could even make, you could make three, I'd say. So you could use the lining as the front and the back and then this on one side and this on of, of two tea cozies. So the silver works really well. It's a really nice tone to go with that. Or we have a pink and the pink is a pretty perfect match. Um, so if you wanted to you know, say stretch that out, make it go a little bit further, then pop one of those on your order. It's by the half metre, so if you wanted to line, actually if you wanted to line an apron completely, I think you've got plenty of fabric there, let me open it up. So that one's not actually lined, it was just hemmed. But if I wanted to put a lining in there, that would be perfect for an apron of that size anyhow. So, or the, if you wanted to line the pockets of your apron, if you want a, a backing to put on your table runner, then that matches really well. Okay, should we do a bit of sewing? Should we do? Should we do a bit of sewing? So that's my job, isn't it? May, may as well. Um, with the apron, again, this is the panel that I used. I've got some leftovers. So I just thought we'd have a play and see what we can come up with. Where's my leftovers gone? There we are. So I have one piece of the floral left and then these are the cows that I have remaining. Because I just used one for the front pocket so those are all spares. So I thought a table runner might be a, quite a nice thing to do so I'm just moving the girls out of the way because I'm paranoid about them getting any more damaged. There you go. <laughs> They're in a queue now. Um, so this is going to be really easy, isn't it? So we'll do alternate pinks and greys. So I could use all five of those. They go together really well. I'm just going to use four. So I'm going to change that one for that one. And they're, they're facing each other as well. So we, we kind of paired up if you wanted to do that. But let's do that. And actually we will do that. So we've got the same cows on each end. That's so. Then I'm going to use some of the pink, I think. Pink or grey? Pink or grey? Hmm. I don't know. Pink or grey? Hmm. Grey. The silver grey. So I'm just going to put a panel down the centre and then one across the top. And then I'll use that for a backing as well. Actually, I might not because I might use all of that. We'll see. We're making it up as we go along. No change there then. So these. Let's have a look what we're doing. So I need a long one and some small ones. I need my ruler and rotary cutter. Right, so let's get down to business and the iron. So just I'm just going down into the cellar to put the iron on. Back with me. There we go. Right. In our new studio. So this measures. 
10 inches. So I need some 10 inch strips and I think we'll have those two inches wide. Uh, let's chop off that um, selvage. And then that is 10 inches wide so I can fit two. Oh, we only need one strip of that. Maybe two, no, two inches, two and a half inches. And, oh look, I think we need new blades. So what did we do? Two and a half, didn't I? That's that. Is it two and a half? That looks about right. Woo! I had a bit of a wibble there. Okay. So let's chop those in half. You're redeemed. And then I'm just going to sew them together in a long row. So let's move. Everything was very neat while Janice uh, was here, wasn't it? Very organised, I thought. When I come here, it's like boom. Considering how neat I am at home. So I'll put you there, and I'll put you there, and I'll put you there, and we'll bring you here. Right. So, right sides together. And I'll just use the edge of the foot as a seam allowance. So a tad over a quarter of an inch. Tadge is a good word, isn't it? I just spell tad. Is it a DGE or just a G? I don't know. It's a DGE, apparently. Like so, let's do that. Right sides together. My strips are a little bit long, but I'll trim those down after. These look lovely quilted as well. They, I did quilt all of the um, uh, the pot holders and, and whatnot, and it looks really nice. So maybe a little bit of free motion embroidery. You could do, a, you could have a little bit of a lazy daisy going on if you um, fancied a bit of hand embroidery. That one. Maybe we'll just join three together. Because I had a thought as well, probably wouldn't have time, because it's always the case, isn't it? I have these big ideas and then don't have time to do anything. Um, of taking a, a, a tea towel, and you know you can buy tea towels that have like um, a fabric bit on the top that loop over your oven door. So we could just buy some tea towels and make one of those yourself and then the, the top of the tea towel is going to match the rest of your kitchen. So I was going to do that. Um, you could put a border around the bottom of a blind if you've got a Roman blind or you're making a Roman blind. Then you could have a border of cows across the bottom. And you know, that, that is so much fabric in the panels. You can quite easily, I've, well, I've already made the apron completely out of one of the panels and this is just what was left over. And then I've still got the, um, the applique piece as well that I could put on to maybe a, a half apron or something that I've already got. I could decorate a tea towel with that one. Just add a little, a little something to coordinate. Um, oh, now a quarter of the pink option sold out. That's of the, um, of the one with the, the tea cozy and the oven gloves on. Quarter of the stock sold out there. And where are we? We've got three. We'll do one more. And then I'm going to use some thermal lamb on the back of this one as well because I'm kind of thinking it might help to protect my table. And there you go. Like so. And again, the, the, the quality of the fabric is really lovely. I was so pleased with it when we started bringing these through. It's a nice, solid, smooth fabric. It's, it's really nice, really nice to work with. Um, right, I need the ironing board. There we go. And then we'll cut some strips to go. It's dead easy, this. Cut some strips to go around the side. 
You could do a. <laughs> you could do a bit of. Um, I don't know, echo quilting around there. Um, or just sew around the edges, just to hold it all together. Press that open. I'm just going with which, which way is easy, it doesn't really matter. And they wash really well as well. You know, if you're making something like an apron, then it's probably going to go in the wash quite a lot, isn't it? But the fabric really washes up very well. It's lovely. Would, would I bring you anything less? Right. So I'd love to know what you think. And as I said, lots of you ordered already. What are you going to make? What's, what do you see when you look at a, a fabric with cows on? What, what springs to mind? Oh, I could make that. Oh, I wasn't going to sew them in that order, was I? Um, all right, so that's there. Let me just cut off those long bits here. And then we'll have another strip to go across the top, bottom and sides. One, two, three, four, that's the one. Oh, Margaret's made a comment. Hi, Margaret. Oh, her mother had a collection of cow creamer jugs, all bought for her. Oh, by people who thought that she would want to remind it of cows because she used to live on a dairy farm. What a lovely idea. <laughs> Apparently she didn't like cows. <laughs> I love her. One of my favourite animals. Um, I've also got a collection. Have you heard of um, Cow Parade? I don't think they're still going at the moment, but Cow Parade a few years ago uh, was basically huge fiberglass, well, full-size, life-size fiberglass cows that were given to artists to decorate. And then they paraded all up and down the country. So quite often, if you, you know, if you travel around a lot, you go into a city centre or somewhere and you see a herd of decorated cows. Or I remember them lining the street on Oxford Street once in London. Um, and they were amazing, but they made ceramic versions of them. And some of them are so funny. They're, they're like wearing fancy dress outfits. Cows in fancy dress. Hilarious. So, but they came from um, places that I'd visited. Um, and my sister bought me quite a few of those as well. There's, there's one that has a bumblebee outfit on, which is hilarious. And it's tiny. <laughs> so, yes, you do tend to... Once you start a collection, you do tend to get bought a lot of things. All right. There we go. Like that. Right. Then we need some long strips to go down the top and the bottom. Have I got enough of this left, I wonder, without joining it? No. Dawn's ordered both colours of the panels, thank you. Oh, she's going to make a tray cloth. She's going to make a tray cloth and think of me. We're going to make a tray cloth later on with boxed corners. That's what Dawn wanted. Just be, be careful what you ask for because you might just get it. Okay, I'm just going to flip this over two inches because I'm not using the measurements on there at all, but I'm. I'm not very good with centimetres. It throws me a little. So that's there. And then we'll have, I need to join these together. So we'll whip that bottom off to make it nice and straight. And then I'm going to need four of these at two and a half inches wide. So just about enough of the panel, but I will have to put the pink backing on it if we get that far. Oh, and then we'll need some button. No, we don't necessarily need binding. We could bag it out. But if you've got bias binding, and number four is there. So I'm going to join these together with a diagonal seam as if I was making binding, because it's a little bit less visible when you have a join that's diagonal to a join that's straight. 
I'm pretty sure if I'd have cut these off first, I would have had enough without joining. I cut the ends of the fabric off to make the um, those borders. Right, so let's overlap these and sew across there. And the same with the second one. Then I'm just going to trim off this seam and the same with this one. And then we'll iron that. I'm not worried about pressing seams open. They can do what they like today. Ooh. Okay, and then also I'm on. Right. So let's sew this on. little project though and it is it is nice to be all coordinated isn't it you know, have, have everything matching you could be making um, maybe drawstring a little drawstring carrier bag dispenser bag um, storage boxes I think would have been perfect with these squares Oh, and bowl warmers I'm hearing as well, so you can pop them in the microwave. They're like little shower caps, aren't they? So you could just cut one of these into a circle and put elastic around it. That would work. Or covers for... Covers for things that you're marinating. I put some pictures on, on Facebook uh, a couple of weeks ago of the cherries that have eventually, after living there for eight years, the first year we've ever had cherries on the cherry tree, and we, are, we have them in abundance. So I, I put a post on saying, what am I going to do with these cherries then? And there was an awful lot of alcohol involved in people's ideas. There was the cherry pies and everything else, but uh, I went for the gin one. Oh, it's rather nice. Um, so I've, I've only dipped my finger in at the moment because I'm going to leave them there for another couple of weeks and really get them potent. Um, yeah, they're sitting in a bowl in the kitchen at the moment. Well, I'm thinking, what? I could have a bowl cover to go over my cherry gin, couldn't I? Instead of cling film, which isn't very pretty. That's that. And then we'll have another one at the bottom. Like so, just make sure I've got that seam the right way down. And away we go again. There we go. Okay. And the, I get the transseasonal, a bit like pinafore dresses. So something that um, so it's nice to have if you're, you know, if the weather's nice and you're lucky enough to have a garden and you can sit outside, maybe have a, the, the cow theme to your tablecloths and your barbecue apron and your tool rolls. Even your chair covers, not completely, no, the chair pads would look really nice covered in this. But I think the colours work well all year round, personally. So, so what do you collect at home? A lot of people collect pigs. As in pig ornaments and things. Pig, I'd love to collect pigs. And again, this is so straightforward. There's no skill involved in this really at all, apart from sewing in a straight line, and even that's not that important. What a great project for a beginner. And if you want to make things to sell, 
I don't mind. Sell away. Um, please don't sell the panels on their own, but if you're making them up and you want to sell them, you've got a little label that's got my name on it as well. I'm, I'm not having you saying that I made it. Okay, so then we've got that. So let's give that another press. I thought I'd chopped her feet off for a minute. How, how on earth did I do that? It's because I didn't do that. I know I get things wrong, but not that badly wrong. <laughs> we'll give this press, then this is going to go on the um, thermalam, which is nice and thick actually, so I think we'll, we'll quilt straight onto it. Thermalam isn't as fibrous as wadding, so uh, that you, there won't be a clean up job on your sewing machine afterwards. Normally, if I'm quilting anything with wadding on the back, I will put fabric on the back of the wadding as well to stop the, um, the link going into the sewing machine. It doesn't damage it, but it's just, there's a lot of fluff to clean out after you've been quilting wadding, isn't there? All right. So I'm just pressing the seams away. Good. Like nice kids' clothes as well, wouldn't it? Not the big squares, but with the... With the panel, maybe, to make a little skirt or a shirt. Oh, and this, this could be pockets on that dress pattern. You might need to cut them down a little bit. They're all big. But that did work well as well. So much you can do. Right. So let's... This. I don't think we need that. That can go there. Trying to make a bigger area. Might need to join some of this together as well. So it is rather, oops, it is a rather large table runner. And then you can go on there. Actually, the thermalam is available on its own if you've got more projects or if you wanted to make two of everything. Um, you know, if you're going to um, make your fabrics or your fabric panels go that little bit further then uh, pop another one on your order. Um, that's for a metre piece. It's only £5.99. This isn't the, the type that has like the silver thread running through it. It actually feels like wadding. So it feels really soft. It's nice to work with, but it does have a thermal aspect to it. And I'm using the 505 spray just to attach it. In a well-ventilated room, of course, and away from my sewing machine. Yeah, I've got, we've got the soft top on today. <laughs> OK, so I need another little piece to go on the end there. I do it all the time with scissors. Oh, here we go. Pauline's mes messaged in. Hi, Pauline. Morning to you. Oh, Pauline's waiting for delivery of her new sewing room furniture. Ooh, that sounds exciting. What are you having? Are you, all, are you all built in? Have you got one of those big units that everything swings out and you just, and then you swing it back again? It's probably posher than our new studio. It's not going to happen, is it? It's not going to happen. Right. So let's match that up there. And the thing is with using spray to hold it in place, I don't have to sew that together. I'm just going to bump the two pieces up and then they'll be held together with the 505. Leslie, now she collects oh, ornamental elephants and rhinos and thimbles from places she's visited. I've got a collection of thimbles. Um, which my, actually most of them, my eldest son and his wife have bought for me, but whenever they go on holiday or normally Christmas and birthdays, I get a little thimble from somewhere or other. Oh, it's a lovely one. Where, where, where did they go? Can't remember. Um, they're wood and they've got, tiny. there's two of them, they've got tiny little carvings on the top of them of deer. You'd never use them. I mean, you'd, you'd break off, but they're so intricate, tiny little things. They're gorgeous. So yes, I do have a, I do have a thimble collection myself. Oh, there's a thought for some new fabric. That'd work. 
Um, who was that who wanted white and blue? I had a message from someone saying they'd like a white and blue china type print on a fabric. That's Vanessa. That did work well. Oh, she collects white and blue jugs. But not a willow pattern, apparently. I'll tell you what you're collecting. I also collect um, little German jugs that are in the shape of monks. Have you seen those? Only me then. Yeah, they're, um, again, it's something that my mum gave me. She gave me a set of three cross-eyed monks. And uh, apparently the, the cross-eyed aspect is the artist having a laugh. They shouldn't have been cross-eyed. It's a shame they're all cracked and broken and stuck back together again, but they are very old. And that's another one of those things that you see in the other one. You think, oh, I'll have that, I'll have that. So I've got wine bottles, I've got ashtrays and jam pots, you know, with the lids on and the hole in with the spoon going in. All kinds of things like that. Um, I'm, I'm just sewing around the edge, by the way. I'm just sitting here having a chat with you without even explaining what I'm doing. Um, so just around the edge of the grey, all the way around. Given more time at home, I'd, I'd go to town on this, I think. Because you can see when you've, when you've put a little bit of quilting on there, it, it makes it really stand out. It gives it a really finished look. So I would go around each one of these. You could echo quilt around the cow if you wanted to, but I'd go around the grey and then I'd go on the inside of each one of those panels and just sew that as well. So for two reasons, it looks nice, it's easy, um, but it also helps to hold the wadding in place. Because obviously this is going to have to go into the wash at some point, so I don't want it getting all buckled as it's being washed. Back down this side. So you could do a little bit of stippling if you if you like your um, free motion embroidery, or just keep adding borders. You could make this into a really big table runner. You just keep adding more fabric. So maybe a layer of pink after I've done this would look nice as well. Almost there. I love this machine, it's so quick. Oh, Sandra's message. Hi, Sandra. She, she loves washing me. Oh. oh, she loves the panel. She can't decide which colour to go for. Thank you. Love getting your messages. Right, I'm going to trim this down. And then we'll put a pink back in on it, I think. I think there should be enough in one piece. Me, it won't be long. These counters are a little bit high for cutting, to be honest. Maybe in the new studio we can have them of those, like they had at uh, sewing quarter that go up and down. That was a bit, bit up market, wasn't it? Maybe we could have some of those. We keep putting requests in, but you know, not getting anywhere. Oh, Leslie's mum had a honey pot in the shape of a beehive. Oh. Yeah, I, my grandma had one. The, the, the lid had the bee as a handle. And did you have like the, I don't know what they're called, those honey spoons that are like a wooden thing, but then with grooves around them. Um, yeah, one of those. Funny, isn't it, how things evoke memories? I'm thinking of the, um, grandma used to have loads of ornaments. She had, um, Oh, she had a sherry bottle that when you lifted it up, it played a tune. It was to play with that sherry bottle for hours. <laughs> no, no chance of having a swig. <laughs> no. Right, that's that. Do you know, if I... Do you want to see me do all of that? Um, oh, yeah, okay then. <laughs> I was going to say then, just put a back in on it and be fine. Right. I would use bias binding. Oh, it's not quite long enough without joining it. In fact, it's not quite big enough. Can't do this, Kat. My fabric's not big enough. 
So, I would. Actually, I wouldn't. What I would is put some bias binding around it because I think it looks nicer. Um, haven't got enough of... Oh, actually, we might have enough of the floral... Fl we might do that. Talking to myself and everything. So that goes on there like that. I'd use my 505 spray to stick the backing on, chop off your selvage obvs, and maybe use some of the... Because in your panel, you've got all of this. So if you're not making it with for an apron, you'd, you'd definitely do it a little bit scrappy. So maybe cut some of the floral and some of the cows and cut them into little pieces and then make one. Because it doesn't have to be cut on the bias. It's binding, not bias binding. Um, so or not on the gingham. You could do that. Um, so cut those into your strips and then put binding around the edge. And I think that would look lovely. But I'm, I'm not going to do that. And in fact, I'm quite pleased I haven't got in the fabric because I want to do some more quilting on that. I am going to sew around the inside of all of those boxes. I think that would finish it off really well. And then you've got, well, you've got all of that for a little bit of extra fabric, as well as the apron. So you've got plenty enough to make that. I've still got one square left, um, which could be a placemat or another pot holder. And then there's a little piece of the floral fabric left as well. So it does go a very long way. And those are quite substantial pieces, aren't they? You know, if we brought you a kit to make that for £20, you'd think you've got a good deal. But you can make that, and you can make that, and you've got a bit extra as well, but you will need a little bit of extra plain fabric. So if I'd have made that with three cows instead of four, I would have had plenty enough to finish it, wouldn't I? Just got a little bit ambitious with the length of it. <laughs> so, I'm so glad you've loved them. Um, oh gosh, it's been so busy. I'm, I'm really, really looking forward to seeing what what you're making with them. I, I can't wait. If you've got any ideas that are different to mine, then I would, I'd love to see them. So, shall I take you through your, app, your options? Your options again. So, this is, the, this is the panel that I was just using. So, it's all of this. So, the long panel here is the one that I, um, I made the apron with. That's, that's why the print goes this way. Normally prints go across the fabric, but I want it to go that way so that you can make an apron out of it. You can make two half aprons out of it. If you just wanted a waist apron, that would be very achievable. Um, but otherwise, you've got a long piece of fabric that you can do what you like. A couple of cushion covers would look nice, I think. Then you've got six of the cows on their own panels, like so, and they're mirror images of each other. And then you have your gingham, and you've got the floral fabric. And remember, the flowers came from... The print on the cow which I think just think it worked really well so that's the actual print from the cow um, and you've got extra oops sorry if you're making it what I've made today so that's that two colors for this one so this one is the pink and that's Bessie Clarabelle and Betty Sue we do have a green as well these are named by Tom, our designer. I hadn't actually given my cows names, but I think maybe I should. I like these names. Um, so that's that. Is that that one? No, that's the same one. That's, the, that's that one. Is that the green one? Nope. There's a green one. So here we go. There's only four. All right, so that's the green option. So this one is um, Daisy, Dorothy and Penelope. I like to think that one's Daisy. She looks, no, she's a, she's a Lady Penelope, isn't she? The posh one. And that one, that can, be, that can be Dorothy, I think. And then she can be Daisy down at the bottom. It's a lovely colour green, that as well, isn't it? Very, very country, country manner. So those are the fabric panels. And then to match, we have the panels that make up, whoops, the tea cosy oven mitt and pot holder. So this one, this is huge. And you've got um, a spare piece of applique on the top here as well, because we just wanted to fill in all the gaps. So that's the pink option. Um, those are the, um, the bias binding strips, um, but you've got enough in here 
if you if you make your fabric go a little bit further, and I think that would be a really good idea, then put a different backing on it, and I'll show you what I mean. Because you could easily make two of everything. You'll need some more thermalam. The thermalam is in uh, in the kit as well, and of course your full instructions are in there too. Um, lovely fabric. You will be able to make the tea cosy. All step-by-step -step instructions with photos are in there. But if you just want to use one of these panels on the front, you've then got another one that you can use on another tea cosy. And inside here is the, um, the floral fabric as the lining. That's a shame because you're not going to see it. So use a different colour lining on the inside and you can make another tea cosy with just the flowers. And there she is. Your famous girl. <laughs> um, then we have the, the pot holder and the same deal with the pot holder so that's this one and this one. Oh, actually no this one so if you use a plainer fabric on the back then you can make two of those um, you will need extra bias binding that there's there's more than enough to do these three projects but you will need extra if you're going to make another set and then finally here we have the oven mitts or oven gloves which have the pink as the lining and they've even got patterns on the inside so the uh, the glove part is actually lined as well you're never going to see that so you could use that as another set of oven gloves with maybe the gingham and you'll need to put plain fabric on the back and some extra bias binding around there so you've got lots of opportunities there to kind of stretch your panel and make it um, make it even more cost effective so all of those and your thermalam and your step-by-step -step instructions so there's the pink and we also have the green Can't open all the way out, but with this one, you have Penelope and Dorothy and Daisy. There you go. You're so precious. And it's a nice colour green. It's a it's a it's a mossy green. It's an upmarket green. It's a very country kitchen, but a country set kitchen, shall we say? Um, I was watching um, To the Manor Born, I've recorded all the series. So I'm thinking Posh Penelope in the Manor would prob probably have this kind of um, homewares, wouldn't she? Um, <laughs> 34.99 is your price for all of those. Remember, that's including the thermal lamp and your instructions as well. Morning, Lisa. Oh, Liz, sorry. Morning, Liz. Miss Heard. Um, Loves the cow creamer design. She says they're per perfect for the country kitchen that she lives in. Oh, wow. In her imagination. <laughs> We're all to the manor born, really, aren't we? <laughs> oh, no, I'm, I'm really pleased you've enjoyed them. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, is that, is that Angie from Great Mill? I, I was asking where you were this morning, Ange. Oh, she ordered it last night. <laughs> Get in there early, girl. <laughs> thank you. We, we had a register this morning, Angie, and you weren't there. I was ticking everybody off. Dawn was there. Cracker Dawn. Dawn was there. Um, yes, Dawn's got a red tick. Um, oh, gosh, a quarter of the stock of everything has sold out. We did have hundreds of these. Um, the pink's in the lead at the moment, which is this set. Get them to you as quickly as we can, and I really want to see pictures. Please put them on um, on the Sewing Street fans page. Can't wait to see what you're doing with them. And of course, with the other panels as well, what are you going to do with those? Is it going to be a matching apron um, or other covers for accoutrements around your kitchen, maybe? Um, maybe you've got a, um, a, a coffee pot so you can do a, 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 cur, a mug, a jug, a jug, a jug hug, a mug rug, and a mug, a mug hug kind of thing. So brand new for you today, exclusive to Sewing Street. You can't buy these anywhere else. I can't even buy them anywhere else. Um, so not, not on my website or anything. So exclusive here and, of course, including all of your step-by-step -step instructions as well. Really simple to follow. And a complete beginner could easily make these. And I think you're going to be really proud of what you've made. OK, we've got Janice coming up in again in the next hour. We're, we're talking about dressmaking and invisible zips. We'll see you again in a bit.
to see me back. <laughs> My favourite piece of kit with the sewing is the seam with that. Hello, I'm Janice from Birmingham. I specialise in dressmaking. I used to run a children's shop and I love making children's clothes. My mother encouraged me to sew from an early age. When we were young, we did dressmaking in the school. My claim to fame was the sewing quarter, but I'm now making also jumpsuits for the ladies and men of all shapes and sizes and it seems to be going for the festivals around the country. See you on the show! Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. If you love sewing, then you need the UK's favourite sewing magazine. Every month, you'll receive exclusive patterns. Follow simple step-by-step -step guides suitable for all skill levels to make your own stunning clothes, accessories and more, together with inspiring tips and tricks from industry experts. Join in and discover your love for sewing. Try Love Sewing today and get your first three issues for just £6. Hello, I'm Catherine Wright. I'm from Leicestershire Craft Centre, which is based in Market Harborough. I love all kinds of sewing, but probably my favourite thing to do is dressmaking. Um, but I also teach patchwork and free motion embroidery and anything to do with textiles, really. I love to have a go at felting and crochet and knitting and, oh, you name it, I'll have a go at it. Uh, so I started sewing when I was seven. My mum taught me to sew and the very first thing I made was an apron. But I'm a terribly impatient person. I also just want to get on with the project. So I uh, didn't wait for her to help me cut it out and I cut it out myself and I didn't know you had to have a seam allowance. So I made the world's smallest apron and my mum still has it somewhere. Um, so uh, sewing tips, I would say, I teach a lot of people to sew, especially beginners, and I would say don't get disheartened, take your um, learning journey slowly, don't expect to suddenly make a ball gown or suddenly make a king size quilt, build up your skills, um, you know, slowly. Um, and I would also say the iron is your friend. Use your iron a lot. It makes your sewing look so much better. It helps you get things in place where you want it before you sew and is a really handy thing to have. Hello everyone, I'm Delphine Brooks. It's so great to be here and part of the Sewing Street family. I'm local, I'm only down the road in uh, Warwickshire. Uh, I started sewing many years ago uh, when I was very young doing uh, lots of art and painting and eventually I went into textiles and I really enjoyed doing the two together. I had then had a bit of a break, uh, something you don't know about me maybe is that I spent many years in the Royal Air Force and eventually in uh, the police as well and then I went full circle and I've come back to uh, my happy place of sewing and uh, which I really enjoy. Uh, my be best sewing tip is measure twice and cut once. I have chipped up a couple of times by uh, not measuring properly and I do always regret it. So now I always measure twice, cut once. Anyway, I really hope to be with you again soon and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you.
Would you like to take part in our weekly competition? If you do, then all you have to do is head to the Sewing Street fan page group on Facebook. Post your picture of your make. Myself, Debbie Shaw and John Cole Morgan love looking at all of your makes every week. We pick our favourite and announce the winner every Friday live on the show. Happy sewing and good luck. Hello there, I'm Debbie Shaw and I would love you to join me on the first Monday of every single month for Sewing Street Surgery. Now this is a dedicated hour where I answer your questions and that could be questions about techniques, it could be questions about tools, it could be questions about new products or maybe something that you've seen that you just don't understand. There's a lot of questions about tensions on sewing machines and there's a lot of questions about working with different weights of fabrics. So if you have a question that you'd like to ask me, the easiest way to to bring a question over to us is to go to our Facebook page and post your question on there. I will collate all of those questions throughout the week. If we need any new products for you or if we need any new demonstrations, those will all be worked on leading up to that first Monday of the month. So do join me, Debbie Shaw, on Sewing Street Surgery on the first Monday. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Would you like to take part in our weekly competition? If you do, then all you have to do is head to the Sewing Street fan page group on Facebook. Post your picture of your make. Myself, Debbie Shaw and John Cole Morgan love looking at all of your makes every week. We pick our favourite and announce the winner every Friday live on the show. Happy sewing and good luck. Morning again and welcome back. Now in this show we're going to be looking at um, well, the skirt that's behind us here. Janice is going to be back in just a second and we've got some really beautiful fabrics that you can make it up in as well. So I'll take you through those first of all and then the patterns if that's okay. I'm not opening all this up because my arms are aching from the last hour. They get four meters of fabric in total and you've got hooks and eyes that's like a little bonus for you as well. So this is the pink flowers on Sky. Um, it's it's cotton, but it's let me just have a. It feels heavier than poplin, so it's a really nice weight. You're not going to need to put a lining in a skirt or wear an, an underskirt with this one. Is what I meant. It's not see-through and sheer um, like a lot of fabrics can be when you're making something floaty, particularly. But it's got a nice drape, so the weight is going to give you a really lovely drape to the fabric. So it's thirty-nine pounds ninety-nine, and I am going to open it up just to see how wide it is. I said I wasn't going to, didn't I? But I'm going, I'm going to. Right. Oh, look. It's 112 wide and you're getting twice. Twice that amount because that's folded in half still. It's not 112, it's wider than 112. What am I talking about? No, no, it's 112. So I'm questioning myself now, honestly. Um, it's not a lovely colour. I, I love these coloured blues. I'd be making a dress out of it. They get an awful lot of fabric there. Remember, the skirt's um, a circular skirt, so you're going to need a lot of fabric for that one. But this is just for the fabric and the hooks and eyes. So if you were thinking dressmaking, I'd make a really nice shift dress out of that. I think I like a shift dress. Or maybe a pencil skirt. Or oh, a little jacket, a summer jacket. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Maybe an unlined jacket, a blazer, a bla blazer that with a, with a red piping around the around the collar and the revere, that, and then red on the... So. That's what I'd do with it. I think it's really pretty. But jackets, you could, it's that nice kind of weight. Hey, that's not so bad, is it? Um, and your hooks and eyes are included in there as well. So that's £39.99 pink flowers on Sky. Then we have this one. Now this one I'm thinking, the skirt, yes, definitely, if you love that retro 1950s kind of look. Um, or um, 
tops with um, elastic around them, like or a, a bardo type of top, would look amazing in this. Uh, it reminds me of seaside. I don't know why, because there's nothing seaside -y about it. Um, but I think those those kind of summer dresses, pinafores, you know, like the dress that uh, Janice made at eight o'clock this morning, but the adult version of it would look really pretty um, in this kind of fabric. Or what about a shirt? What about a blouse? You've got a lovely crisp cotton. There's no reason why you couldn't. Um, so £39.99. Again, you're getting your hooks and eyes include I'd go for red buttons. I'd go for red trim and red buttons with it. That'd make it that'd make it na nautical, wouldn't it? I'm shaking my maracas now. Um, £39.99 is your price for that. And again, there's four meters in total. Our fave though. Big beam on Janice's face. Isn't this gorgeous fabric? Tulips on grey. It's so classy. It's so, it's a bit posh this one, isn't it? So I'm thinking summer weddings, uh, maybe next year. Um, hope some eyes are included as well. And you've got the four metres. That would make a lovely smart dress. Maybe a little bolero jacket to go with it. And that, that's fantastic. It's just gorgeous. It's a lovely colour. It's a very soft colour. Um, the detail is incredible. The weight of the fabric is perfect. Weighty enough to give a garment drape, but not too heavy that it's going to be stiff. So I, I just think that is absolutely beautiful. For £39.99 is your price there. And again, you've got four metres. So if you were making a nice little shift dress, then that would be really nice, I think. Um, OK, and then the skirt pattern is this one. So we've got two sizes for you. This one is the size 8 all the way through to 14. Sorry, it's, six, oh, it's size 8 to 14. 6 to 14 is the US size. Um, you need measurements really, don't you? You should never go just by the dress size because that doesn't work. Have a look on the web, can't see that. Have a look on the website, there's a picture of the size. Don't go by your normal dress size because they vary so much from pattern manufacturers to pattern manufacturers. Um, so go by your measurements and if you're, um, yeah, just go, your waist measurement, that's all you need to go for on here because it's a wider skirt. Um, so have a look on the website for that one. Particularly if you're around about the size 14 because you may need to go up or down depending on, on your size. Um, if you wanted to go for the larger size, we have this available for you as well which is size 14 to 22 dress size. But again, look at the measurements on the website on the back. Um, or if you can't get online, send us an email and I'll get a magnifying glass. <laughs> or, or do you want to let's see if we can do this? See if we can do this so you can get a closer look. I used to be able to see perfectly. I blamed it on working in shopping telly for all these years, but then I got told it, isn't it, because you're getting older. Um, so your size is so, so, so measurement. We want measurements. Measurements will be up here. So I can just do that. Right. So we need a waist size, which is here. So this one is the 14. So you see what I mean? 14, 28 waist. See? So they're coming up small. 28 is normally a size 10. Um, so if you're between a 28 and a 37 inch on your waist, then that's the largest size. Um, the smaller pattern... Oh, they're all the same on there, aren't they? What am I doing? Um, your waist on the 6 is 23, and that takes you through to the 14, which is the 28. So go for your measurements, not for your dress size. 28 inch waist to size 14. That'd be a bit tight, wouldn't it? 9 99 for the pattern. So we haven't bundled these with the fabrics because so maybe you prefer to use a different fabric or you've got fabric of your own already. So that is those. Um, okay, Janice is going to be here in just one second. If you want to get ahead of the game and order on the website, then do feel free. Here's how. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalog,
by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. Welcome back again. Hello, everybody again. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Debbie. So we're going. To, what have you been doing for the last hour? Just sitting there thinking about the last show. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, thinking Janice, you do do some stupid things, <laughs> but oh. we're all only human, aren't we? <laughs> so, um, but yeah. So yeah, we've so had some messages for you. Pondered and everything. Um, everyone is loving you being here. Yeah. And nice. I'm loving your top tips as well. Oh, that's good. Yes, that's good. yes. So, so we might I'll keep coming out with more and more <laughs> as I go along. So, um, yeah. So we're skirt making in So the we're sun. skirt making. Now, this skirt, it's so simple. And you can run it up quick. All right. And that's the beauty. And if you're a beginner, no problem. The thing is, it's a back and a front. It's cut on the cross, which... With this fabric is going to hang beautiful anyway but if it's cut on the cross it hangs better anyway right. all, all, all dresses you find that if they're cut on the cross they're more expensive uh, and a lot of the fabric, designers it? and it uses more fabric yeah. but of course again it's quality over quantity yeah. isn't it so you know and this skirt made up even in this fabric will be absolutely stunning when I put that one on my dummy, oh, it just flowed. It just flowed yeah. beautiful. And I thought, wow. The biggest job on this skirt is the hem. You need an hour just to do the hem. <laughs> now, and the way I do a hem is, I'll tell you now, just in case we don't get that far. <laughs> but we should get that far, but we might not. I always do, if it's an inch um, and a half, um, I don't bother with what I'm going to tell you, but if it's five eighths, I always do a five eighth machine stitch around before I start. Right. And then I fold in it all along that five eighth stitch because you've got a fantastic line. Yeah. If you do it all the way around, it's bang on. And then the way I did this, this skirt was I folded it into the line and then I folded it in again. And I bulldog clipped it and then machined it. But of course, that took an hour. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying with the skirt, because it's all the way around. It's worth so, it though, isn't it? Because it, hemming a curve isn't easy because the, your actual raw edge of the fabric is wider than where yeah. you're going to sew. Yeah. So it, it's, it can go It can pucker so up, can't it? It, it can really pucker um, up. And you need, a particular when you've got a lot of fabric like that, yeah. you need it to be perfectly straight, because if it yes. does go off a little bit, then it's just it, going to stand out a mile. Yeah, so the five acts, and it doesn't advise on this pattern a hem. Doesn't like on it? a lot of patterns, it will say one and a quarter inch hem or an inch hem, but it doesn't on this pattern. Oh. It's, it's, it leaves it to your own devices. The other thing on the pattern, it says twill tape. Now, what, what I find is because this skirt is cut on the cross, it's like cut on the bias, the other name. So for this skirt, you need bias binding, not twill tape. Twill tape is if you're on a straight yeah. waistband. But if you look on this one, that is a curve. Yeah. So you need the bias binding to go around the curve. Yeah. So once you've cut it out, now I was going to try and do this on air because I thought this is a quick skirt, I'll try and do it on air. But if you notice with Debbie, when she was stretching it all out, it's so big and I'm small. And I thought, <laughs> I am not going to do that on air because literally this fabric, me, I was having a fight with it in the house anyway. So. But anyway, so once you've cut it out, it's that shape. And the first thing you're going to do is stay stitch around the waist to stop the fabric from stretching once it's made, okay? So that's the first thing we're going to do. And the way I always do a stay stitch is I always go to the end of the foot on mine to do the stay stitch. And what you're going to do with the binding, you're going to 
do put the binding, the top of the line of the binding on where you've stay stitched. So you do need a bit of a, you know, a bit of fabric on that top side. So we're just going to stay stitch both sides. And I think this is one of those steps that you might think, oh, I shan't bother doing that. It's, you know, it's it a little bit more time consuming. It does make a difference, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, so you, you'll find this on, um, on any kind of curves like necklines and armholes. Yeah. Because again, there will be some point of a neckline that is on the bias. And a, a woven fabric doesn't stretch on the grain, but it will stretch when it's good at a 45 degree angle. And on areas that you want to sit really flat, so you, you don't want to risk that fabric stretching. So don't miss this bit. Don't out. miss this bit, and it, because there's no waist, there's no waistline on the skirt. All right. So it's just a bias binding. Yeah. So you haven't got a waistband. So you do need, like Debbie says, this day stitching. We've had a message from Beth. Morning, Beth. Um, will we be doing, oh, will we be doing a demo for little boys' clothes? Well, I did a shirt, did a shirt last week. Um, it was uh, from a book called So Chic Kids, um, which sold out. Was that last Sunday I did that? I think it, I think it was. Yes, on that last, no, Monday, wasn't it? Wasn't in on Sunday. Um, yes, it was on Monday. So if you have a look on YouTube, back to Monday. Didn't get a chance to finish it, but that's the story of my life. <laughs> um, but it is on there. <laughs> That's the problem, isn't it? We don't have time to finish things. Oh, I have s such good intentions of doing so much. And it just never happens. Never happens. And even with lockdown, you'd have thought <laughs> you'd have got things <laughs> done. <laughs> then again, no, I couldn't do lockdown. So. Right, so that's your stay stitching done. So again, it's just a beautiful little stitch. Okay? So then what we're going to do now is front and back together. But on the left hand side, you have to leave it open to the notch because we've got to put the zip in. Okay. Okay. So, so all I'm going to do is wonder clip down. Now, this is where I love wonder clips, they're so much quicker than pins. And the other thing is, the men don't argue about you dropping your pins all over the house yeah. and the dogs. <laughs> And if you've got dogs. <laughs> See, my mother is known for dropping pins. Oh, she's lethal. <laughs> she's lethal. And I remember my dad years ago. Oh, he used to hate her sorry, because of the pins. Because she was just with pins. Now, again, like Debbie said, you can either overlock it or the zigzags. <laughs> the pinking I, shoes. Do I think if you're going to do a lot of dressmaking, it's worth investing in an overlocker, isn't it? I've got an overlocker. Yeah. I've had an overlocker for years. Have you? And I, I, I used to think I'd sooner have my overlocker than the sewing machine because the, the finish. Mm. But now with these machines, some of them, um, I have got an overlocker on my machine and my machine was an expensive machine and the overlock on, the, on it is absolutely wonderful um, and of course it doesn't use as much cotton yeah see the overlocker uses the cottons so <laughs> that's the um that's the annoyance with overlockers is the actual cotton it uses but you just make sure you buy cheaper cottons from the markets or because you can get some cheap cottons at the markets yeah for that. So all I'm doing is uh, wonder clipping both sides or if you haven't got wonder clips you just pin down both sides to create. Now we were asked earlier about whether we, you needed to use a zipper foot on the skirts. Is that uh, an invisible zip? This, really? No. It's not, not invisible, it's okay. a regular zip. Um, so I'm going to attempt, because I've always used a zipper foot, <laughs> but I am going to attempt for viewers who haven't got a zipper foot to um, do it with a normal machine stitch. Because years ago, they didn't have zipper foot. I, I don't always use it, to be honest. Um, you don't use them yourself? No, really? unless it's a, a very 
chunky zip. If I make yeah. a bag or something and I've got a number five zip, then I can't, my foot won't go over it. But for the most part, I can, the, the foot on my sewing machine will go over the teeth of the zip. Yeah. So I don't normally bother. Well, we'll or you can move the needle t right over to one side yes, so you can you get can. pretty close anyway. So five eighths on each seam allowance with this one again. I'm doing five eighths seam allowance on this. So always, you find that most dressmaking is five eighths seam allowance every time. It's very rare, it's any smaller. Yeah. It's very rare. It's just a, a, a lovely style of skirt, isn't it? Oh, it's, it's summery, shape. it's floaty, it's flattering. I, I, I'm imagining you know, a, a, a knit in waist with a big belt round it. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I, I, I lost my waist a few years ago, and I've actually put a reward out for it. If you see it anywhere, I'd, <laughs> I'd like it back, <laughs> please. Um, <laughs> but it's just such a flattering shape, so it's not okay, it's got a waist, but it's not figure hugging, which a lot of us are a bit uncomfortable with. I've put grey grey cotton on the machine. And it should be. <laughs> it's neutral. Yeah, I suppose it yeah. can be neutral. Can't yeah. It? This is a neutrally type grey. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but cotton's cotton. <laughs> does the same job. It does exactly the same job, and it's not too much of a difference anyway. No. So. So this one I'm leaving to the notch open, ready for the zip. And I'm going to go back and forward quite a few times here, just to strengthen where we're going to put the bottom of the zip. So I'm just going to do that two or three times. Then I'm going to go down the five eighths again. It's such a simple stitch that it's, it's a very simple skirt, isn't it? Ever so simple. If you're, again, for beginner sewers, or maybe you're, you're the quilter that you fancy dipping your toe into the world of dressmaking, yeah. what a great way to start. Because again, if you've got a zip, you're going to have to learn how to put zips in at some point. I know. I've um, never done one on it. But there's no, <laughs> <laughs> there's no fitting, as in darts and no. you know, adjusting patterns and things like that, because the only measurement that you need is your waist measurement and the length. And if you've got your waist measurement right, you can't go wrong with it. No. So, ooh, back, back, back. Okay. And that's that done. So if I just turn it right way out so you can see the way it's going to hang. That is a full circle, isn't it? Yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> bigger than me. <laughs> so that. It's, it is, it's beautiful. It's, you can see the way that's going to hang. And then, oh, see? It it's does, doesn't it? It's beautiful. It's, yeah, yeah. Just, and it's because, I, I do think a lot, of, it's the fabric, more so than the fabric, but I do think that bit cutting on the cross helps. Yeah. So, if I can just pinch there. So, yeah. So that's it. So the next fun bit is the zip. Now, Let's turn it. Actually, yeah. you can hear the crispness of that fabric, the, the, the can't fabric. you? Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. Right then. So, now what I normally do at this stage is, again, we need to just trim the seams down with the pink and shears. Because I always say, oh, where are they? Where's they gone? Oh, oh, I might have put them away. Oh, I've got them. I've got them. Okay. Panic over. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll just trim the seams down again. I always do it afterwards. Never before. I don't know why I don't do it before, because a lot of people do do it before, don't they? And they sometimes instruct you in the patterns to do it before. Do they? Mm-hmm. But all habits die hard, don't they? <laughs> all habits die hard. You get so a, we a go. perfect seam allowance if you cut them afterwards, though, don't you? Yeah. I suppose if it, if it is something that's more fitted. Also, you've got more weight to it than doing this. Yeah. And again, uh, maybe when you do it um, at the beginning, it's probably double weight. I don't know. But I always like the pinking shears here, especially when you're putting a zip in, so that you've got the edge nice. Yes. So that yeah, if you, you can't trim it seen, afterwards, can you? You can't trim it afterwards yeah. when you put the zip in. So I always do it at this stage. 
You could okay. um, um, kind of ring the changes a little bit as well. I'm imagining two big patch pockets on the front of it. Yeah, because you've got enough fabric to do that. Yeah. So, oh yeah, and if you want to do it in a, if you've got in your sash a plain pink or like, yes. you said like patch, patchwork. With, denim yeah. would look nice. Denim, yeah, look nice on the blue. Well, I think a light denim yeah. would go nice. So, okay. um, and is messaged, love, love, Janice. Loads oh, of hearts you've got as well. You. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. So, can, can we start a rumour about you and Andy then? <laughs> <laughs> the rumour. <laughs> right then, so here we go with the zip. So, now this is where I'd normally press down. That's it, I'd normally press down here because we've cut off. Um, so normally I'd press that down. Now what you have to do with the zip, just, now I always do one side. Now, People sometimes, you see people do all zips different ways. Sometimes people will do a basting stitch down yeah. to hold it down, right? I'm ne I've never done that. I just do it freehand, you know what I mean? I do it on, um, on heavy fabrics. Um, yeah. I wouldn't on finer fabrics because you're going to want to pick the stitches and you might see the holes. It. Or cushion covers. I'd, I'd always cushion do that covers. on cushion covers. Yeah, so normally that would be pressed. I keep having to finger press it. So. But then, sit down. You start three eighths down because you've got to allow for the hook and eye. So that the top of the zip has got to be three eighths down of an inch, okay. which is about that. So then I pin it first. This is the way I do zips. Pin it first all the way down and just make sure you're right on the edge. I do, I, I've done the invisible zip so now for years. Yeah. Because you just put it straight on a seam and it's easy to sew, they're easy I, to they're, sew. They're easier to sew than these type of zips, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> these ones, I, I literally will put this on, both sides first, then tack it down, get the pins out. Tack it and then machine it afterwards close to the edge. And that's the way I do these zips. So I am I am a fan of glues. What we so the the glue, the glue pens. Oh I've never used one. Have you not used a glue no. pen? Have we got a glue pen? Never to used show one. you. Let's make sure. So you use glues for zips? Yes. Um, yeah, it's a. I don't know if we've got any on the website. There, um, I've got one at home, but I've never used yeah. it. Yeah, so it's, it's a sew line one. I only use the the glues that are for fabrics because they don't gunge your needle up. Yeah, um, and you can literally put it down the edge of the zip, squash the zip down, and then sew it. So there's no pinning and and, um, and tacking. Really? Yeah. Or a lot of you use um, quilters tape. So that's like a double sided iron on tape. So Gosh. it sticks it down. And that sticks it down. Sorry, I, I hadn't left enough seam because, like I said, I'd normally press this down. <laughs> That's it. If you want a glue pen, they're in. Oh, that wicker basket. So glue I'm pen. looking for a wicker basket because apparently they're in the wicker basket. I'm oh, looking down here for a wicker basket. They're not a wicker basket, the wicker basket over there. I really must watch you do one of them. That was so easy. I've never. I, I'm scared, a lot of things I'm scared of, you know what I mean? I have yeah. to have a lot of the courage yeah. to do it just in case it goes wrong. And glue pen, I'd think, oh, glue. <laughs> Thank you. I use these, thanks, uh, or I suggested using glue. Be I'd actually, before fabric glue sticks were around. Really? Um, I did um, a quilting and patchwork course donkeys years ago. Gosh. And it was English paper piecing. And um, we oh, hand tacks. Yes. It took ages. And I said to the tutor, couldn't you just glue this glue thinking it. Pritt stick? Um, and she hit the roof. 
nearly got thrown out. She was doing, you, you cannot glue. And, but nowadays, this is what the pens are made for. They're designed for fabric to glue them to down. glue them down. So it's about a quarter of an inch wide, so you just along there and Gosh, stick it down. And, stick and it, it down. washes out. And it washes out? Yeah, they're brilliant. Come Nick. <laughs> so next time, I'm going to have a go at that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to, I will, I'll, I'll have a go. If I don't see Debbie do it first. <laughs> <laughs> so all I'm going to do, going to do now, not going, going to. <laughs> you, That's a you brummy in me. if you want to go <laughs> That's a brummy in me. I'm going to just tack baste where I've just pinned. So if I just baste where I've just pinned. I thought I'd threaded a needle out there. It's probably in the, in the bulldog clips. Wonder clips. <laughs> I always call them bulldog clips. Right. So if you look at the where I'm going to pin now, that's the way the zip is looking at the moment. And we want the zip to look like that when I'm finished. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. <laughs> and anything can happen with me, ladies. You know that, and gentlemen. Anything can happen with me. So. And shall I tell you what else I find, Debbie? What? Being caggy-handed is Being awkward. Being left-handed, caggy-handed. Because, oh. you know, like now, look, yeah. I've put the zips in, that pins in that way. Because I'm left-handed, I can't... I'll put them in oh. back to front. I see. Yeah, you find left-handed trips you up a few times with things that you do. It's ever so weird. And it's like with writing in checkbooks, if you've got a company checkbook, you can't write into the stub. You can't get into the stub. It's uh, very strange. So, yeah. so you and Andy, then? <laughs> I don't know who Andy is. <laughs> it says he loves the way that your hair matches your top. Oh, thank you. You're colour coordinated, he says. Thank you, Andy. I don't know who Andy is. I'll tell you one story that happened to me. Is, is, uh, can we say this on a Saturday morning? Yeah. Okay. Um, when I was on the other show, um, uh, other other show, um, a, a lady called Elaine called in from the West Midlands, and John, who was presenting with me at the time, said, "Do I know Elaine from the West Midlands?" And I said, "No, I don't know anyone called Elaine from the West Midlands." I said, "John, I said the West Midlands is a massive place, you know." I said, "There's a lot of Elaines." <laughs> I said, so, I said, I, I don't think, I don't know anyone calls a lane, apart from when I was at school, I suppose. That was on the Friday, on the Saturday, onto my local fabric shop, and I laughed. I was standing in the queue, and I laughed. This lady came up to me. She went, it's Janice, isn't it, from the Surrey? And I went, yeah. She said, it's a lane from the West Midlands. <laughs> I'm not lying, she's a viewer. <laughs> And she, she, it was on the, the next day, oh. and it was this Elaine, oh, wow. and that's a God's honest truth. It was um, amazing. <laughs> yeah, honestly, that really happened. So, <laughs> and she's been an avid viewer ever since. It's funny though, isn't it, when you think a chance meetings, I wonder how many you just miss. I've never been recognised apart from that. Oh, no. <laughs> Well, after today. No. After today, <laughs> you never know. Yeah. Oh. So, but if I dye my hair orange for next next time, then nobody will recognise me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do my hair all colours. Do you? Yeah. I thought if it, if it's Paddy's day, I'm going to go green. <laughs> I will. So now it'll go down in the office, but <laughs> 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 I'll just make sure that I've got my own office or whatever. I don't. So have what to. colours have you been? Covel, bright orange, so much so the one boss came to me and went, shh, as though he was lighting a match. <laughs> and bright orange, went, it went bright orange. Yeah, so. <laughs> so, so th this is from your other job, not yeah. bosses from here. <laughs> no, <laughs> the other job. Because we, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't do that, we wouldn't. We would. So, but now the zip's gone on. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this from the right side. And I'm going to do it on the machine with this foot. All right. And if I just mark where the bottom of the 
zippies so we don't go over it. And then I'm going to give the machine a go with the zipper foot. Now, I'll just leave it in the middle for now. I'm going to just try it this way. So we're just going to do as close to the edge as we can. Without going over. There. So this is a normal foot and not the zipper foot. And we're just going to go as close to the edge as we can. And just do a little back stitch at the top just to hold it because you can afford to do that on this because the actual binding is going to take the top bit over so you're not going to see it anyway. So we're doing as close to the edge as we can, if not closer. You'd probably go even closer than I am, I'm just a bit nervous about Right, now, this is what I was worried about on here, getting the zip up. <laughs> so leave your needle so that down. It's better, leave the needle down, get yourself back in to where it is. And to be honest, with skirt, the skirts, the zips, the zip is the most important part, and you'll probably end up doing it two or three times to get it right, because the zip can make or break an outfit. Yeah. Um, it's like buttonholes can make or break an outfit. So you, you have to really take your time with them. Now go down, leave it in, because now I'm going to go across the bottom. So I'm going to leave my, my needle down, I'm going to slightly turn the skirt, put the needle down, do a few stitches, Needle down, twist it, and then you're going to go up the other side, as close to that edging as you can. Okay, and make sure you tack the, the zip down, because you don't want to be going over pins. No, it's another one of those um, uh, processes that you think, oh, I've, you've I've got, got to do. I'll just go for it. Yeah, um, and you can't. But sewing around, and well, you can't sew around the pins, you can't sew over the pins, so no. you may as well not have any pins there. And bulldog so. <laughs> wonder clips don't get into here, so so again, here, yeah, pull the zip back down so you can get the what's they called out of the way slider, the, the slider, pull. that's it, <laughs> the slider out of the way, and then up, back down, up to the edge. And you can go to the top, over the stitch, and that's it. Caroline's put a message on Facebook page. Uh, good morning, ladies. I love watching you. I made my first items of clothing a week or two ago. Skirts for her three girls. And oh. today she's going to attempt to make a dress and matching hat for her youngest. And she's rather scared. You all make it look so easy. She go said. for it. Just go for it. Oh, it is Honestly, easy. just go for it. And Angie Andrews, look at what you've been up to. You can only get better. She's got a mojo back. Angie's got a mojo. I did find it for her last week. I've got it in one of my drawers. So I, I, I'll let her have it back again. Oh. <laughs> right, I'm just taking... So, Jo. I'm just taking the tacks out. So... If I can, if I can see them. <laughs> oh, you, I'm, blind. So I'm blind, but I've got glasses on. Because <laughs> the, the thing is, the tacking cotton is more or less the same colour of the skirt, so you can't see it. Anyway, I'm going to leave them in. <laughs> so normally you would take the tailors, the tacking out, and that's your zip. Done. Okay. You can all do zips, girls. Practice will make perfect. Yeah. So, so that's your zipping. So now your binding goes on. So the binding. So what you have to do with the binding? It's a nice colour. I had a dress this colour when I was like 18 Did and I loved this, uh, the dress and when I saw this I thought I'm going to make that dress again. <laughs> <laughs> so so all, all three of them actually, they're, they're really lovely the colours are lovely aren't yeah. they? Now with this bias binding what you have to do, you have to leave five eighths or two an inch over so that you can wrap it over 
afterwards okay so the first thing we do with the binding you open it up now I don't know how far we'll get on this but We've got about five minutes you open it up and you put it against that stay stitching line okay if you can see the stay stitching line I'm glad it's grey that cotton because you can see it more so so we do that and then we put the pin in on that I don't want to put I can't really do a wonder clip here because so we'll try and do it without putting too many zips in too many pins in should I say and then let me go the other way see what it's like being left hand it's so <laughs> awkward sometimes because what you're going to do then is on the binding you're going to stitch in that you're going to I'm going to go down carry on down you're going to stitch on that binding there and then you're going to pull it over Okay. and then that will give you the finish that's on that skirt so you're obviously using um, shop bought bias yeah, binding you could make bias. your own you, you could make your own yeah because there's enough fabric to do it and because the skirt is cut on the cross it's already there ready for you to use it really yes. if you know what I mean so um, yeah but, but it's important that it is cut at that 45 degree angle it's got to be cut so, on the so 45 it's got degree a bit of give. angle so if you look at that if you've got um, one of the boards, the cutting board, you can put the fabric and cut, yeah. use that as a... Or um, I've got the actual, you know, the um, the quilting rulers and stuff like yes. that. You can use them as well. Yeah. So that's what I use to do the bindings. And then, of course, the binder maker yeah. that you can get as well. But the things that come out with now... I know. I mean, I love my little seams rice. I, I swear by that. Cause What's that's the seams so rice? It's like a credit card and it's got all the different measurements. Oh, on. yes, I know. Clover. Oh. Yeah. Clover. Yeah. Absolutely amazing they are. So, yeah, the things I do pick on. And, yeah. I, and it's like when I was on the show last time, it was the tubes where you turn the tapes. Oh, and I, that. I discovered those on Sewing Quarter. <laughs> I brought along some project to make with and a safety pin or a knitting needle. That's it, exactly the same as me. Yeah. You're the same age as me, Deb. I've been taught the same. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly the same. I'm going off now. I'm talking a bit again. I'm just going to pin this. We go off. It happens. <laughs> so, yeah, so this goes all the way around. And it gives you the finish. Yeah. I don't know where to get the other skirt down and just show. Oh, oh. But they, this skirt is really nice. No waste. <laughs> they, they're nice, aren't they? Sometimes no waste clothes. What do you find you wear more? Trousers or dresses or um, a bit better? Skirts. Skirts, skirts and tops. Skirts, skirts. Yeah. Yeah, I've, oh. in fact, these are probably the only trousers I've got. I find <laughs> dresses suit me better. Do you? I think it's because of my height. They make me look taller. Because yeah. I, I don't like wearing too high a shoe. And because I'm small, not now, um, I love my flats. So I like to wear... <laughs> so what we used I to is... I always used to wear heels. Yeah, we did. Know, yeah, didn't we? But not anymore. <laughs> I remember going into a studio in one of my previous jobs for the um, um, health and safety guy chasing me in there. She says, you're wearing nails! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had to get insurance and everything for those. Really? <laughs> I can't do it now. I, well, I, I've got so many nice shoes that I just can't... I don't know, but I, I, can't think, I think my can't feet have put weight yeah. on over the years. It's weird, isn't it? Mm. And then the other thing is, is my nails are biting. Because with accounts, you find a lot of account people bite me like that. Really? Yeah, I beat my nails for years. And I think if I put false ones on, I'll have trouble with me, sorry. Yeah, so, and that's why I don't wear rings. Oh. Because of my You're nails. I don't like bringing attention to my nails. So I'm doing this. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, because I bite my nails. It's terrible, isn't it? So, but I do put a bit of nail varnish on for you guys. So, <laughs> So we're just going to now machine quickly round here. How are we doing for time? <laughs> we're just doing for time. We've got five minutes still. Have we? <laughs> I'm panicking, I'm panicking. Don't panic, we're fine. 
Right, so, here we go. <laughs> okay, off we go. So, again, just nicely, get the seam with her. Make sure it goes. Yes. Uh oh. Uh oh. What's happening? I don't know. The machine's female. I don't know. You just have to look at that there. I had a needle yeah. drop out on me the other day on that. Oh, you didn't? Never had that hand before. <laughs> just, just fell out, just randomly. It just <laughs> fell out. <laughs> I carried on regardless. You Actually, have to, I, don't I didn't put the needle back in again. I did feel a bit bad that the next guest <laughs> came along. And thought, it's going on. I didn't sabotage it on purpose. <laughs> right, I'm just trying to I'm trying to get the binding on the edge because as, as, as I was pinning it, it um, see what I mean though with the seam ripper. It's <laughs> it's just a great tool. See, so there's been tools invented to do things like that. I know. But the things they come out That's with, you can't really keep on top of them, can you? No. Unless you buy them all. <laughs> jo, we've had so many messages for you. Oh, that's lovely. On, um, on, on Sewing Street and on the Sewing Street fans page. I'll have a look at Sewing Street fans later on. I can get on it here now. You're a breath of fresh air, they're saying. Oh. Oh, they're lovely. The, the, the people are so lovely. Because, like I do, I want to reply to some, but, like I say, with my internet, I swear. <laughs> Or oh, it drove my other half mad. <laughs> so, because he's at home. Um, and it drove him balmy because he couldn't get onto his normal TV that he oh. likes to watch. And, uh, and like I said, I couldn't meet my brother in Canada because we Skype. So, we have to do that. But before all this kind of business, I, I had um, uh, an uncle go to uh, New Zealand on years ago. And yes. um, my mum used to save up for the phone call on Christmas Day. Yeah. And that was it. That's the only, apart That's... from writing letters, obviously. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's instant now. It's... Well, what's amazing was like, Lawrence has been there 30, 40 years now in Canada. And when he first went there to send the Christmas presents, you were talking like £200 just to send the boxes. Um, and then they didn't get all the stuff. They'd really? open them at customs and they'd end up with stuff that we'd never sent. So if, uh, what I do now, I go onto Amazon CA. Yeah. And it's wonderful because you pay a local delivery charge. Yeah. Best thing ever. Best thing they ever did. So it's great now. So the internet is very good, I think. It, it can cause a lot of misery as well, but I do think it's a very good tool as well when used properly. Yeah. You know, but um, for things like me, sending my brother presents. <laughs> And anyone else, for that matter, <laughs> who lives abroad. Because there's so many people in families now that live abroad, yeah. isn't there? So, but it's been tough because my mum's getting old now. She's 82 oh. and she lives with me now because she's at that stage. And I was hoping he was going to come over, but of course with this Covid, he's better off staying where he is. Hopefully so. it won't be too long. Oh, I know, I know. And we're all in the same boat, aren't we? We've all lost special ones and you know it's such a shame right i'm there yeah <laughs> we got there so then all we do two minutes to go trim the binding off but you have to leave i always leave more than what they sound the pattern <laughs> so let me do that but if you look now what i'd, I'd normally do is trim that down but I'm not going to because of time. So what you then normally do is just turn that round and if I just want to clip it quickly and then just machine it down. And if you look, see that finish? It's, it's a lovely finish look. Yeah, so you don't see, it's not like binding a quilt. You don't see no, the binding you don't from the top see the side. Binding. You have to it's make sure up. it goes over. Yeah. Just make sure it goes over and doesn't show on the outside. So yeah. you could go over that bit more if you can. Just leave a little bit over, I would. And then all you do then when you go all the way around on the ends, just tuck it down, fold that over, tuck that in, fold it over, 
do a nice little hand stitch there, yeah. and then you put the hook and eye. So Fabulous. if you look at the hook and eye, I did on this skirt. Oh, am I allowed to take this down? Yeah. I've had so many pins in that wallpaper. <laughs> Is it wallpaper? Yeah. I thought it was proper brick. <laughs> <laughs> Our pins aren't that strong. I thought it was proper brick. And then that's, that was the one I did with the hook and eye. All right. And it just gives you that nice little finish, the hook yeah. and eye. It's and nice and smooth as well, it's not bulky. And it's, no. And that's the zip I did then. Okay. So they're, they're beautiful fabrics. And if you look at that, the hanging, the way it hangs. It's lovely, isn't it? If I was a size 14, I'd put it on for you and show you. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not. <laughs> in my dreams. <laughs> well, thank you so much. That's it was a lovely, lovely morning. It's Do you know when you're in again? Doesn't it? You want some Do it? you know when you're in again? 25th, I think, of July. And Christmas. For Christmas. Christmas. For Christmas. What day is that? Is that Saturday or Sunday? I don't know. They said they can let me know if it's a Saturday or Sunday. It's so a, I don't it's know. It's a Saturday, apparently. So, oh, is it a Saturday, oh. apparently? So I'm in on the Saturday then. Yeah. OK, so, well, we shall yeah, look forward to that. Way. And well, thank you very much. It's been, it's okay. been, it's been, been a pleasure. Lovely, hasn't it? yeah, it's lovely really meeting nice you after me thank making you. all your yeah. bucks. <laughs> Right, I'll give you a quick reminder of the three fabric bundles that we have for you in just a second. But meanwhile, this is how you can order. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. So let me give you a look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at the way that fabric hangs. It's a, a real, I don't know, almost retro style, isn't it? Lovely skirt. So let me give you the details. You're going to be twirling all over the place with these. Um, so this is the tulips on grey, which was that one. This is the most popular one. Oh, we're all a bit posh this morning, aren't we? I think this is the, a really lovely, classy, upmarket kind of look. Um, so tulips in gorgeous colours and a grey background. It's just re it's really classy, really beautiful. £39.99 brings you four metres and we're even going to give you some hooks and eyes as well. Then we have the Pink Flowers on Sky. So this is the one that... Uh, Janice was just making up just now and again look at the way that it hangs so partially due to the um, the fabric being just fabulous and partially due to it being cut on the bias it just has a really lovely a lovely look if you have hip issues girls then that is such a nice design maybe a little crop jacket or a cardigan would look nice with it and I do think of belts I don't I don't I don't mind if my waist is disappeared I just think a yeah, white t a white t maybe a wide white t-shirt, a longer white t-shirt, and a little pink or peachy coloured cardigan would be nice with that. Ugh. Four meters again, and your hooks and eyes for thirty-nine pounds and ninety-nine pence. And again, the, the the quality of the fabric is lovely. You're not going to need underskirts or oh, underskirts. Frilly petticoats with a little bit of broader on grey lace poking out from around the hemline would look nice, wouldn't it? Very 1950s. This one, 
same quality of fabric, but look at this blue spot. And I'm thinking red buttons would look amazing with that, wouldn't it? Um, and this isn't including the pattern, it's including your hooks and eyes. Um, so you could be dressmaking with this, you could be making shirts and blouses and dresses with ruffles and off the shoulders and a little bit of elastication. You could be making pinafores for summertime, you could be making, you make, make homewares with it. Um, it's not necessarily just for dressmaking, but wouldn't that make a lovely summer outfit? Again, it's £39.99 pence for that, including hooks and eyes. And then the pattern to make the skirt, we've got two size options for you and different styles of the skirt as well. Well, all the same style, but different ways of embellishing. So one's got the buttons on, you could make it a little bit shorter if you preferred, or you could add a border around the bottom. Um, so on the front of the pattern, those are your three different options. Um, this is nice as well. They've used a lace, but put an underskirt underneath it. So it's just a little bit sheer under there. Um, let's have a look at the sizes though, because this is really important. And the sizes you'll find just on the packet here. So we've got two sizes for you. And you only need the waist on this one, the waist and the length. So the waist on the smallest is 23 inches and the size on the pattern goes up to 28 inches. That's your size 6 to 14. As you can see, I well, I think they're coming up quite small. I wouldn't say a 28 inch waist is normally a size 14. I think 28 inch waist is normally a size 10. But ignore your dress sizes when you're uh, buying any kind of patterns. Always go by your measurements because they vary so much. Um, so that's the smaller pattern. The larger one goes from the size 14 up to, still can't see that, up to the 22. So that will be the 28 up to 37 inches on your waist. To be honest, it wouldn't be too difficult to make that waist bigger if you're bigger than a 37 inch waist. Um, when you're cutting your pattern pieces out, you basically have a circle. So there's no dots or anything like that. There's nothing else to take into account apart from you've cut a circle out here. Remember, there's just two pieces of fabric. So let me just, I'll just whoosh that there and put it back again. So we've got the front there so I can show you. Normally dress sizes in patterns go up in half inch increments. So it's quite easy to just take the waist measurement and I'd cut quarter of an inch to start with, cut a quarter of an inch away from the waist, try it on. If it's still a little bit too tight, and cut another quarter of an inch from all the way around the waist and then try it on. Because you can see the further you cut down here, because of the shape of it, you can actually make that bigger. So you could just keep going up and up and up. So if you're not 37, you really want to get hold of the skirt, just keep cutting a little bit more away. Obviously you're cutting off the length of this while you're doing it as well. So don't cut the length to size before you intend to alter the pattern. Um, if you're a little bit concerned about that, don't cut it in this fabric, make yourself a twelve. Um, or you could paper, you could um, actually fit the paper pattern to yourself, just put some sticky tape on it and, and fit it to yourself. But if you make a twelve, you don't have to make the full length and you don't put a zip in a twelve, you're literally using some cheap fabric like calico and then make it up and then just keep cutting the waist until you get the size you wanted to. The same on the opposite extreme, if you're tiny on the waist, um, then you can take the sides up and make this a little bit smaller. So it's it's a very simple skirt to adjust to make to fit as well. So and it's only nine pounds ninety nine for the pattern as well. So it's um, it's great value for money there too. Um, so, if you'd like to order anything from us, then you can on the phone lines 0800 0014433. If you take a look on the website, you'll, you'll be able to see all of the different fabrics and, uh, and tools that we have for you there as well. We've got loads of sewing machines, there's um, overlockers and scissors and everything that you need in your sewing, I was going to say your sewing vocabulary, but not, that's not quite right, is it? Your sewing arsenal, shall we say. Um, it's again, it's very warm here, but the iron, the iron's underneath. Mm. Now then, coming up in the next hour, we have some brand new fabrics for you. We have some extra wide fabrics, so if you're looking for some backing for your curtains or your quilts, then do stay with me. And I'm going to be making a box-shaped tray liner. I'll see you in a minute. Hello, my name is Sally Stevens. I'm from Worcestershire, a little town called Upton-upon-Severn, which is a lovely little riverside town. 
and not far from there I also have a little sewing studio so I can work and leave all my mess left out um, when I'm preparing projects and quilts and so on. My speciality is in fact quilting, patchwork and quilting, and I probably started that when I was about 14 years ago. So as I often joke, that was only seven years ago. In fact, it was rather a lot longer, but I've always enjoyed crafting and patchwork really hooked me and I love it. So now then, what can I tell you? Some Something you may not realise about me is that although lots of you have seen me many, many times on, um, on sewing TV and classes, because I, I teach as well, um, I also do a lot of unpicking. So don't be afraid ever. If you have to unpick things, so do we. It's not a problem. We all have to start somewhere. And sometimes you get a bit cocky and think, oh, I can just do that without pinning or without this. And then you think, ah, should have paid attention to my own words. So some sewing tips for you. That's one. Keep a seam ripper handy. That will always be your friend. And um, another one that I think is very important, whether you're a beginner or more experienced, when you're sewing something, particularly for the first time, a new technique, slow down. There's no rush. It's not a race. Have a little practice with spare fabrics if you've got them before you use your best fabric that you've just purchased so you get your techniques just right. But also slow down, take your time, watch what you're doing, think about what you're doing and read the instructions. That's always very useful. So what can I say? I've been asked to say what my claim to fame might be and I would have to say in all honesty, being on Sewing Street. Hi, I'm Rosie Weld. My name's Poppy and I'm a nutritional therapist. Hi, I'm Ruth Lynette and I can't wait to join you all on the brand new Gemporia Lifestyle Channel. If you're a fan of primal living, you're going to adore what's around the corner. What is lifestyle? Lifestyle is healthy habits. Feeling good, it's about looking great. Making sure that we're taking good care of ourselves inside. And it's about the life that you lead and the home that you live in. All of this is why I'm so excited. We've got the most wonderful team. Homeware deals and primal deals under one roof on one channel. I can't wait to share this brand new channel with you. So we'll see you soon on Gemporia Lifestyle. Gemporia Lifestyle, coming soon to Freeview Channel 74 and Gemporia.com. to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com alternatively you can message us on our official facebook page hello my name is fiona hesford and i'm founder of sew girl i'm based down in worthing on the south coast of england and I've got a range of sewing patterns which I've developed over the last few years, which are projects for loose fitting clothing, everyday simple garments, things that I really love to wear myself. And I'm going to be bringing you them to Sewing Street over the next few months. So I look forward to seeing you then. Bye. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalog by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping.
Welcome back again. Now, this is our last live hour today. Um, we've got some brand new fabrics for you and we've got some extra wides too. And I'm going to be making um, a tray liner at the request of Dawn from 8 o'clock this morning. So that's coming up in a bit. Let me show you, first of all, though, these extra wide backing fabrics. Um, don't just think about quilting with these. Um, have a think about curtain linings, bag linings. With the extra wide fabrics, it's, it's such great value for money, but it also means on larger items like quilts, you don't have to put a, a seam down the back of it. Now this is by the half meter. So um, if you're making a quilt, you're gonna need more than this, unless it's a long skinny one. Um, so if you ordered two units, you'll get a meter, four units, you get two meters and so on and so forth. It's quite a heavy weight of fabric. It's, it's quite surprising. Um, Sometimes with backing fabrics, it tends to be the cheaper fabric. This isn't, it's a really lovely quality. And now width wise, we have, our studio is about two and a half meters wide. And I think this will probably fill it. Um, 280, so it's almost three meters in width. So that's 280 centimeters. Um, which is a lot of fabric. Nice colour as well, isn't it? Now, it doesn't have to, I know it's very wide fabric, but it doesn't have to be just for backing anything or lining anything. You can make a shirt out of this, you can make a skirt out of it. I think it's quite um, structured. Um, so if you're going to, it, it doesn't have the flow, for instance, that the dressmaking fabric had in the last hour. It's a little bit firmer than that. Um, but for bag making, not just for linings, I think this would be perfect. I'd still use some kind of um, interfacing like the H640, that kind of thing, um, or a foam maybe, but I think that would look really good. Maybe just a little bit of hand embroidery on there as well. Almost looks hand dyed, doesn't it? Like a, an indigo tie dye kind of affair. So this is the navy, navy shadows, you can see where it got its name. Already that one's in the lead, that's the most popular. They were launched yesterday and actually sold really, really well. We've got um, lots of these have gone. But again, the value, the value is just amazing. Right, so that's the navy. I like the light grey. That would go rather nice. Oh, that would go rather nicely with my cow creamer panels, wouldn't it? I'm, I'm, I, shall, I shall take it over in a second and have a look. Um, but a lovely soft colour on this one. You'll find that a really useful colour um, to have in your stash, if you're just stash building at the moment, because it goes with so many things. Now, even colours that don't have grey in them, it doesn't argue with anything. Actually, that does have grey in it. That's nice, isn't it? Oh, new fabrics. We'll have a look at those in a second. So that's the shadows light grey and works, doesn't it? Apron liners. Remember, it's almost three metres in width, 280 centimetres. So it's that shy of three metres. Oh, this is nice. This is the sand. It's like a, a gold colour. That's beautiful. Um, and again, eight pounds and 99 pence is your price. Oh, I want to be at the beach. Oh, we've got some beachy fabrics coming up actually, haven't we? Oh, that's close. That's nice. That's nice. Oh, that's nice. That goes really well, doesn't it? So a backing or a border. If you make a lot of bias binding, then these are perfect. Because you tend to, some pattern mashing, you tend to um, waste quite a lot with bias binding, don't you? But at 8 99 for all of that, it doesn't quite matter so much. Right, so that's those. And then the brand new fabrics we have for you today are the, oh, I love these colours. The peachy colours and the pale pinks, they're delicate, they're pretty. Um, this is the whole bundle. And we have the blues in there as well. Isn't that gorgeous? You go out of the way a minute, you're being out, Sean. So we have daisies. Oh, they're so pretty. They're just lovely soft colours. Love the shading on there and tiny, tiny detailing, which normally depicts a quality of fabric. I love the honeycomb one. That's, isn't that just a little bit different? Oh. 
pocket on a bag, a patch pocket on the front of a dress. Um, it's quilting weight of cotton, but there's no reason why it's only quilts you need to make. It could be bag making or dress making, making trims. Oh, look how pretty that is. That's so delicate. And that's the same print but in a different colour option, so it looks so different. And in fact, this one's the same as well, but just on a white background. And then there's your daisies, and are they peonies? I don't know. Are they tulips? No, they're definitely not tulips. Are they uh, poppies? That's what I was thinking. They're not pop. are they poppies? I don't know. Um, so, £39.99. You have three metres in total. You will have to search the code on the website, though. So if you put in IVXC01 into the search bar at the top, then it'll take you straight to these fabrics. Or if you're ordering on, uh, on the phone lines on 0800 001 just say to the operator, I would like the Country Roads Fabric Bundle, please. And they'll say, thank you very much, that's 39.99. What are you going to make? We have them by the half metre as well, so if you think, all right, that would make a lovely blouse, but I'm not going to get a blouse out of half a metre, um, order a couple, or order four. Isn't that so pretty? Um, and they, they will come all joined up together so you can have large pieces of fabric. And this one, oh, here we go, is GNYH30. Now this is brand new today and you were buying this at the beginning of our eight o'clock this morning show. So pretty. I like the soft colours. I think that's it's the colours that are so unusual. They're so different. Um, I wouldn't say on yellow personally. I would just say on peach myself. But look at the delicate little petals and those little blue flowers. That's so, so detailed, aren't they? So pretty. Very uplifting kind of um, kind of print, I think this one, and it's very only six ninety nine as well. We we'll like a bit of very only six ninety nine. The honeycomb one's very different though. So I, I'm thinking dressmaking again, um, but they do go so well. Mm. Homewares again. All, I mean, all of the colours, they're all outlined as well. There's, so, again, so much detail in these. So pretty. But even with the, I like the greys as well. So even if you pick out any one of those colours in a plain fabric, you say that would go very nicely with the, with the extra white. Actually, the grey would go very nicely as well. Mm. So that's the pink hexagon fabric. Again, at £6.99. Then we have peachy flowers. This is KJYH18. Thinking baby clothes, nursery items, maybe little cot quilts, um, nappy stackers, bottle holders. Um, wouldn't that make an amazing lining in a baby bag as well? It's very, I, I don't know, it's very a cartoony almost, isn't it? Very, very simple design. Really pretty. And look how, again, you've got all of these tiny little outlines, tiny, tiny details. A printing of a fabric is as important as the quality of a fabric. And uh, a tiny, fine line like that really does depict a quality of printing. But the fabric itself is just gorgeous we, we launched um when i was in last we had some of the um the poppy cottons so they oh yeah it was the daisy may ones wasn't it last week and oh that they were love it's, again it's the colors it's um mother and daughter designers and um they have a style that i think is so recognizable and i think a lot of it is to do with the colors that they choose as well that dot, no, no, that wouldn't. No, don't go for the backing fabric with this one, it won't go. Um, but again, even that, that dark blue, the grey kind of indigo inky colours of the blue. I wouldn't necessarily have put that with peach, but it works so well. But again, the quality of the fabric is exceptional and the quality of the print is just beautiful. So I think you've got a bargain for £6.99. Then again, we've got the same print here. 
If you don't want to go for the dark blue as a contrast, these two are very pretty together. And again, that's £6.99, so that's your pink blossoms on the white fabric. And then finally, this is the same print as the first option that we saw. So you wouldn't put those two together without a little bit of that in the middle, would you? But this is on the, um, on the white background, so pink and blue flowers on white with this one. Oh, really, summary. Um, we are down to single figures for the big bundle. So, always the most affordable way to go if you're looking to buy a whole selection of fabric that matches because you know they are going to match perfectly. Um, and to buy the whole bundle together, one, two, three, four, five, six pieces, that's three metres in total for £39.99. pence. But do search the code on the website. You are doing that. Thank you very much. Sorry about that. Um, but IVX601 is your item code. So go to sewingstreet.com and just type that code into the search engine at the top, the search bar at the top, and that'll take you straight to the fabric. Fabric. And if you, if you can't find it, then give us a ring. It's 0800 001 433 and speak to an operator and just say, I'd like that country roads, the country roads bundle, please. And this is what you're going to get. And then let us know what you're going to make with it and, and share some pictures as well. I'd love to see that. So you do make a bit of a saving if you go for the bundle of £1.95, not to be sniffed at. OK, should we have a look at these? Right, these are all individual. We have bees in the sky. <laughs> um, and little dandelion clocks floating around as well. There is a bit of a theme with this one. Um, again, you're getting the half metre. I shan't open them all out because we've got loads of them, but you get the idea. Half a metre by 112 wide and by the half metre, which means that you can, um, you can get these in bigger pieces if you need. So I'd, I'd love a, sh a shirt out of that. I think that would be quite quirky. Um, but any kind of home, outdoors, outdoorsy things, um, maybe... A lining for a picnic basket, maybe, um, or cushion pads for your uh, your garden furniture. Nice little bolster just to go in the middle of your back to make it a little bit more comfortable when you're sitting outside all day. Is it is it warm outside today? Is it sunny? Oh, good. And we like to encourage bees into our garden as well. We like a bee. Um, so five pounds and ninety nine is your price there. Did I tell you about the bees that I rescued? There weren't happy bees um, at the side of the house and as I was planting some plants and kind of digging away right right at the side of the wall and a bee came out of the ground and I thought it was buried alive. So I carried on digging with my trowel and there were lots of bees all buried alive underneath the, the soil at the side of my house. So I set to free them before I was actually informed that bees nest underground like that so I, I wasn't freeing the buried bees I was digging up their home I didn't think they lived underground though bees they, they, I, I, they seem to they should live high up somewhere anyway I freed the bees I looking at this and um, I'm by the seaside I can hear the waves crashing against the rocks. I can see crabs on the beach. I can see children paddling with jelly shoes on and plastic buckets and spades. Well, I wish. Um, £5.99 is your price there. It's got a lot of movement in it though, so, and it is another very detailed fabric, which again, although this is a quilting weight cotton, it is very soft, it's got a great handle, so there's no reason why you couldn't make a dress or a shirt or a skirt out of this one. So again, at £5, that's, that's really soft actually. That's a really soft one. Now you're not, you're not waiting for me, you're ordering stuff all the way down here that I haven't even got to yet. Staying with the seaside theme. So we've got, we've got shells on this one, but the thing I like about this, they're proper shells, aren't they? They're the kind of shells that you do see on the beach, but you don't pick up and take them home. Um, so we've got little starfish there as well. 
got the drop shadows which give it a, a depth, gives it a, a little bit more of a reality. I love that colour as well, it's very summery isn't it? That's £5.99, that's the blue shell fabric. And then we've got Enchanted Garden with the birds, birds and hedgehogs, butterflies and snails. Um, but I love the outline. It's a very, very sketchy kind of look, isn't it? Very modern, very stylized. And again, that's five pounds and ninety-nine pence. Nice, nice for homewares. Um, maybe you're thinking kitcheny theme again for that one, or the un unexpected, like the inside of a jacket or the inside of a bag would be nice. We've got flamingos and pineapples. Homewares again, I'm thinking with this one. Bag making, maybe. A lot of people love flamingos on, uh, on, on fabrics and homewares and things. Fl flamingos are really having a moment in the popularity stakes, aren't they? I could make a lovely lampshade with that. You could, you could actually make your tray liner with that. Mm, but I'm not going to. I have a plan. Caravans and washing. And we've got barbecues. We've got spotty and stripy caravans. Little trees like the topiary and the hanging the washing out. Oh, we've even got a little bike. So they, they need to start cooking, I think. <laughs> and on a similar vein, so that's um, uh, gateway camping, getaway camping, sorry, on white fabric. We've got getaway beachside on white as well. So we've got um, got a little thing and buggy, a June buggy. I said June buggy, isn't it? I drove one once. Um, there, there I was working in Mustique for Christian Dior, as you do, and um, there were there were buggies that were uh, owned by the the villa that we were renting while we were working out there. Uh, they have no differential, you know, as I discovered as I was going up a sand dune, and landed on my back with the thing on top of me. It was great fun. There was a bouncy, <laughs> but it's like uh, if you. If you haven't got differential and you go around a corner, the whole thing tips up. It's great! I was very bruised. We have calla lilies. This is the calla lilies green. That's a very elegant... Oh, now then, that would be very nice for a cushion cover or two, wouldn't it? Or table runners or nice little accent pieces. Um, but I'm thinking living room for this one. Or maybe in the bedroom. Mm, but a bed runner, that, that would look lovely, that would be very elegant. So that's the uh, elegant lilies in green, and then we also have the smaller elegant lilies as well. So the same designer, as you can see, just smaller lilies. So maybe for smaller projects, or why not have one out of that? I'm thinking cushion covers, and then one from this as well. It's got a black background, so if you have black fabric, those are really going to come to life. So this is called Elegant Single Lilies at £5.99. We're camping again. Or are we glamping again? Oh, glamping every time. Um, we used to have one of these little tiny caravans when I was younger, um, when I was a child. Um, we've got parasols and surf, but never been surfing. And um, the, the pampas grasses. And there's a part. We used to go to a place called Silas, which I think is in Cumbria. And we'd, we didn't go to a campsite, but there was, um, we used to park up the caravan on the edge of a cliff, but there was a, st uh, a stairs that went into the cliff and then came out at the beach at the bottom. If you're from anywhere near there, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about, but I'm going back a long time. But it's funny, isn't it? You look at something and you think, oh, Silleth, that's where we used to go. And uh, here we go with the, uh, we've got camper vans, pulling caravans. Got they, they look like, I would get those trees, they look quite Nordic, aren't they, those trees? And the awnings. Oh, now in a completely different vein, that's retro holidays. We have roses. I love this one. Um, and I think it's the grey background that really sets it off. It gives it a, a, more of a, a softness, I think, to the fabric. But again, that's another very elegant, very classic design, isn't it? But really detailed, lots and lots of shadows, lots and lots of colours involved in that as well. <gasps> and I'm thinking, you see, I'd make a dress. I think that would make a lovely dress. An evening dress. Oh, that skirt. 
the full skirt. I wonder if you'd get the drape out of that. This is the one that I'm going to use for my tray liner because it's the only one with pink in it. And I've got a pink tray liner, a uh, pink tray. Uh, this is Summer Days Flowers Fabric, again at £5.99. I'll just open it a little bit because it's got a larger print on this one. So I'm rubbish at flowers. My sister would know all of these with the Latin names. Um, I'm thinking Daisy, I don't know. Um, but they are real flowers, aren't they, which is quite nice, they're realistic. And in the background you've still got these little dandelion um, clocks uh, floating around. So that must be part of this collection. Because it's got the same little clocks in the background. I'm thinking, maybe. Then we've got dandelions. Let's fold this one away. And there. Dandelions on, um, we're saying sky blue, I'd say more of a, I don't know, it's quite a tealy kind of colour I think this one, and turquoise here. Dandelions in, or maybe it's in the sky, blue, I don't know. £5.99 again for half a metre, all of these are by the half metre which means that you will have um, the opportunity to buy meterage if you prefer. This has been a really popular one as well. Um, it's, it's a really lovely kind of old gold kind of look. Green polka dots, we're calling it. This would be make a nice, make a nice bag lining as well, wouldn't it? Uh, with black on the spots as well. So maybe a, a, if you've got a plain back black fabric, maybe you've got some of our black PU. Um, just even making binding to go around it would, um, would be a great use of fabric there. That's only £5.99 and then Finally, we're going quite retro with this one. The marble says abalone, it's like looking on the inside of a shell, isn't it? And if I just open this again so you can see the design and the aurora borealis kind of colours. Is that really pretty? It's, oh, couldn't you just dive in? Oh, that's a, that's a swimming pool in, a, in an amazing resort on a very hot day, isn't it? Mm. Again, it's only £5.99 for half a metre. That's all of those we got there. Hmm. Right, we do have some very busy ones though. So the navy extra wide backing fabric is starting to look vulnerable. We only have 11 metres left. Um, consider that most of you are going to be ordering more than one because that is, um, that's half a metre. And this is twice the width of this. Um, so we have actually sold 35 units between five people today. So you have been multi-ordering. If you're going to make a quilt backing out of this, you're going to need um, a lot more meterage than just half a metre. So I don't think that 11 metres is going to be lasting too much longer. Have a think about curtain linings, or it's a nice substantial fabric if you're going to make bags out of it as well. It's really versatile, whoops. Um, also, the floral on white background from our brand new fabrics. This has been popular. Very delicate, isn't it? Very pretty. Again, that's £6.99. And you've been buying multiples of this one as well. Oh, I'd love to know what you're going to make. Oh, pink and blue flowers. I've got the wrong, wrong one, haven't I? Pink and blue flowers on white would be that one, wouldn't it? Sorry about that. It's this one that's been really popular. I can't think in dresses. It, that's the kind of thing that I think um, I'd... Uh, best dresses. Wedding, not a wedding dress. A dress to wear to a wedding. Maybe bridesmaids dresses, that kind of thing would be really nice. So even the little girl's dress from the Edge Clock show this morning, the pinafore dress, would be nice out of this one as well. It's lovely. Right, that's all of the fabrics that we have for you. I'm going to, I'm going to make a tray line. I'm still scratching my head a little bit because I can't remember how I did this. This is for Dawn. Hopefully you're still with us, Dawn. She was here bright and early at 8 o'clock this morning. Not like Andrew, who turned up late. <laughs> I, should, I should remember that for next time. 
Um, and I'm going to use um, that one because I've got a shocking pink tray and there's a bit of shocking pink in here as well. So that's that. And I actually I could do both sides out of this, which may seem a bit of a waste. Um, or I could do pink. No, I'm going to do both sides out of this. Now, uh, uh, Dawn wanted a tray liner with boxed corners. This doesn't exactly have box corners because they're angled. So I thought that might be a bit more of a challenge. So I'm going to use that. I'm also going to use some Thermalam. Could be H640. You're going to need something to pad it a little bit, not just have it in the fabric. But this one means that if I've got something I want to keep warm on my tray, then that would work perfectly. If I was just making a box shape, um, I would literally measure across here and then measure the depth and then imagine the whole thing flattened out. So you would have um, right angle corners cut out of each corner and then sew it back together with the corners up like that, do two of them, turn it inside out and you've got a perfectly fitting tray liner. But this one's got angles at the side so we need, to, we need the tray liner to go into the angles to give it a professional finish. So I'm going to actually use some of this as a template just so I know that I've got the angle right. So let's have a, a heat erasable. So I'm just going to make a pattern out of this. So that there, that goes in here. I'm keeping that nice and flat. That goes there and that's that size. So that's the size of my base. I will re-measure that before I cut it just to make sure it's square. I'm going to put a point in the corner, each one of the corners so I know that I'm getting that nice and snug. And then let's draw the angle up here and all four corners. Because I don't think, I haven't measured the angle of these, but it doesn't look like a 45 degree angle to me. And then we'll just have a little mark on the top. Could do this in paper, but this is going to be quicker. So. So that there, that there, that's there, now that needs to be cut. So let me, so I'm, I'm still making this up dawn as I go along. Right, so that needs to be there. That needs to go there. I think I'm going to have to cut this out and then refit it. Make sure I get those corners right. Morning, Alan. Oh, he missed my birthday. Don't worry, Alan. Oh, he's designing his own patchwork quilts and cushions for his local church. Post pictures, Alan, won't you? Love to see what you're up to. Okay, now then, before I cut it, I'm going to make sure it's square. Because we don't want a wonky tray liner, do we? So that's there, that's square there. I'm on the 11 and a half mark there. That's fine there. And then where's this end gone? There it is there. I think that is pretty much on track. And then we'll cut it out and then we'll make it fit. Great noise that, isn't it? The crunching of quality scissors on the fabrics. Oh yes. Okay. Thermal, I'm on the website. Oh, the scissors on the website. I'm not deaf as well as blind. Um, there's four pounds off these on the website. Right, I'm going to cut those corners. And then we'll need to cut those out as well. So back to our tray. So I'm refitting that now. Ah, then I can see how much I need to trim off here. So you can see that overlaps and I don't want it to, I want it to meet. So if I measure that, 
I will need to chop off, come from that end, an inch from each corner. That should work. Let me just check with these as well. Well, that's not quite in there. Yep, I reckon an inch. So I'm, I'm guessing this one there, inch there, and there. Four. And then we'll have a refitting again before we cut out our fabric just to make sure it's going to fit. Now I did make one of these in my half yard vintage book, um, which I think we've got on the website. But with that one, I, I'm going to sew this, the corners together on this one. With the one I put on, in my book, I put ribbons on each corner. Well, that I think looks fine and dandy. So we've got a nice little fit there. Well, we will have when that meets there. Okay, then we need to cut that out of fabric. So that's my, my tray liner twirl. Every day, every time I come in here, I put something down. It's normally a pen lid and it disappears. No idea why. Right, I have a mat. So a red pen lid, if anybody at home can see a red pen lid, I'm missing it. We'll go to the wrong side for this. And we'll need two pieces. Um, again, I wouldn't, wouldn't normally put the same fabric on the back, but it's here. Well, it can be reversible then, can't it? So I'll need that on there. And then I won't waste all of that fabric. Let's move this over a bit. And then we'll cut. So literally just using this as a template to cut around the edge. And then I'll trim into those V shapes in a second. What do you reckon, Dawn? I don't think she'll have stayed around all day for this. <laughs> Mind you, she did say she was going to use a, a cow pan. That would be nice, wouldn't it? One of my cow panels to do this with would be really nice. Because I wonder if you could get, actually get the cow in the middle. A little bit of 505. Although this is quite grippy when you're using it, to be fair. Try not to get it on my tray. And that goes on there. Oh, this is the challenge, isn't it? Getting it exactly the same. Do my roots need doing? Uh, right. And then we can sew it together. So right sides together, I'm going to sew across the corners and that's going to give it its, its box shape. So it's almost like making darts. And you go. And we'll do that in all four corners. So you can see already it's got its it's got its shape. So if, I'm, I'm impressed actually with this thermalam because it's um, it's a little bit firmer than your H640. It's really easy to sew through, but it is it, has, it is thermal, so it's going to help uh, keep the heat in, or in this case maybe protect the tray from anything hot that you put on it. them. So should we have another fitting? I 
And then I'm going to do the same with the lining piece or the, the underside piece. Quite quick this as well, isn't it? I like a, I like a quick project sometimes. I like a project that I can actually get finished in a show normally. I don't want to do that. again on Tuesday by the way so if you've got any more requests come and let me know I quite like a challenge when I get it right doesn't always go right I say it's all a little bit odd this weekend because I'm normally Sunday Mondays and today I'm, I'm Saturday Tuesday we'll be right again the week after And then, just like I'm making a bag, we're going to put these two pieces right sides together and sew all the way around. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to pin it, we'll just go for it. I could have wonder clipped it. But it's quite, I find, Sometimes with projects, particularly like this one, more crafty projects, um, by the time I've pinned all the way around or even clicked all the way around, I might as well just sewn it. Um, you could go to town and maybe add a little bit of uh, rick rack or a pom pom trim around the top. It would be nice. You could personalise it with a bit of embroidery if you've got your embroidery machine. So I'm lining up the corners, that's the most important thing and the edges there. So, a fun fabric though, isn't it? It's, it's happy fabric, I think. A put a smile on your face fabric, uplifting, cheers up your mood. We have very similar wallpaper in our downstairs loo in the 1970s. <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, not, not all houses had downstairs. When, when, um, when my daughter was younger, um, the house we lived in had a downstairs. It was just a loo and a sink, you know, nothing special. Um, but what, she'd be about oh, six or seven and had some friends round after, after school one night for the first time. And this little girl came in. She'd never seen a downstairs loo. And she just walked in and she went, oh, you haven't got a bath? <laughs> I think she thought that's where we washed and everything. So. At the same house we lived at, my, um, <laughs> it was quite, down a really long windy road. We didn't own all the land around it. We had a very nice little house right at the end of this very long road with gates and everything. And um, my niece came to stay. She'd be about the same kind of age. And she said, I feel really sorry for Auntie Deborah. I said, what do you mean? We've got this really nice house down there. Because the ice cream van never comes down here. Funny what you think, isn't it? That was more important than anything to little Lauren. I'm just leaving a gap so I can turn this the right side out. A little down, turn around, off we go. Right, turn it the right side out. If I can find the gap that I left, there we go. And that will need a quick press around the top. I'm not worried about snipping off corners and that kind of thing. And um, I'm going to top stitch or edge stitch all the way around the top just to keep that seam in place and that will close the hole over as well. So that's looking fine. It will look better in a minute. Um, I need something to poke those corners out with. because they were nice, quite sharp corners, so let's make them really pointy. And these two, then we'll press it. And then we'll top stitch it and then we're done. You can make a basket lining in the same way if you don't have a tray. Um, <laughs> Is Dawn still watching? Lovely dawn, glad to have your company still. I've got
got nothing to iron on. Let's iron on this. We'll be fine. Hey, we're having a new studio soon, so if I burn the table, it doesn't really matter, does it? We'll just leave it for jewellery quarter. Jewellery quarter? Jewellery maker. Right. Actually, we'll probably be landed with all the same furniture, won't we? Better be careful with it then. Right, so I'm just putting the, uh, the seam right at the top. Um, and then edge stitch around the top and my tray line is done. You actually could put a, that's, an, that's a good idea. I'm, I'm telling myself things that are a good idea without even telling you what I'm thinking. Um, to sew a seam around the inside to keep that flat is what I'm thinking. But we haven't got time, have we? Right, that's the opening that I want to close when I top stitch. So let's do that. Okay. So because it's a top stitch, I can lengthen it a little bit, which means I'm going to be sewing quicker. And literally sew about an eighth of an inch from the seam at the top. Nice and straight. Needle down as you go into a corner, so that's right on top of the seam, and twizzle around, and back down again. A nice dressing table tray liner, wouldn't it? Maybe one of the new fabrics would be nice for that, make it a little bit more um, delicate and bedroomy. So either way you can keep all of your, um, your hair stuff and your um, cotton wool buds and things like that. Or how about just lining a tray for your sewing room? Um, I, do, I, I do have a tray, a bit bigger than this one, which I keep at the side of me when I'm sewing, that has, think, like, like all of the things that we have around here, so uh, your, your marking tools and a, an unpicker and your um, stiletto and things like that, just things that you need there and then, all on a tray. Spare bobbins are all on there. And I do have a liner for it. Mmm, what I made my very self. Just sewing over the opening. And into the next corner, we're nearly there. Oh, Heather's asking for a Japanese knot bag on Tuesday. Thing with the Japanese knot bag, I'll need a pattern for it. Um, I should put some thought into a pattern for one of those. So it might not be Tuesday, but that is a really good idea. Yes, thank you. Any more ideas, come and let me know. Whoops. Okay. So there's my tray. I, I think it'd be a good idea to actually fold the corners over and crease that and iron it. Give it a nice crisp finish. So there and there. And then I would stitch just around the inside here. And that's kind of going to make a almost like you're scoring it to help it to keep its shape and then that's going to sit in there and you've got a perfect fit that needs pressing a bit more it's yeah. a nice little tray liner for you um now then thread wise could have had a contrast couldn't i so, for instance, we could have used our Tula Pink. Oh, get a lot in here. Ooh. Oh, look. Um, Aurifil thread is a really high quality thread using long strands of cotton, which means that the thread's going to be longer and it's less fibrous than cheaper cottons on the market. Uh, Tula Pink is a renowned fabric designer who brings us lots and lots of colour in her fabric designs. So these have been designed to go obviously with lots and lots of colour. But if you're top stitching, if you're embroidering, um, these would make a lovely contrast. I think it's nice to have a whole rainbow of colour of thread so that you've always got something to either tone or contrast with the fabrics that you've got. Got. and these are just beautiful and they're in two boxes as well if you're thinking about giftware you could actually split those up into 
into two, one for T and one for P. Um, not very many of these in stock now, they've been really busy. They're £66.99 and you've got 20 reels of thread in total. That would make a fantastic gift for anybody who sews because it's one of those things that you're going to run out of at some point. Very difficult to choose fabric as a gift for somebody. They've probably got the same machine and all the tools that they need, but they will always run out of thread. So a thread as a gift for a sewer will always be gratefully received, as long as it's a nice quality thread. And this is Aurofil, so you know it is. And you've got a really lovely range of colours there as well. So that's the Tula Sunrise selection. Um, we also have the Premium Collection, which are these. And in, oh, in, in here, these are variegated. So you can see that they're, they're, they're space dyed basically. You've got different um, colours within each one of those ranges. So if you want to have a look at the, at the actual thread, as I pull that off, it goes from turquoise to pinks. Aren't they beautiful? So really, well actually really nice if you're quilting. If you're um, doing a little bit of stippling, free motion quilting, it adds an extra element, it adds extra interest um, when you're quilting with a variegated thread. So um, try it, give it a go. And actually if you're, if you're free motion embroidering flowers um, and leaves, it gives a nice texture because as in nature, um, and nothing's one absolute solid colour, is it? That's made of lots of different colours, so you get a really nice shading if you're embroidering with those as well. Some of these are quite subtle, and some of them are quite blatant in their variegativity. That sounded wrong somehow, didn't it? Um, so I'm sure it's a word. It's £33.99, and, and again, you're getting 10 of those in the, in the pack. So 10 and 50 weight, 50 weight is going to be the weight of cotton that you use more than anything for dressmaking or from quilting as well. So you've got quite a standard weight of cotton there. We also have our own essentials. So that bit of cotton is really bugging me. Um, which is exclusive to Sewing Quarter. Sewing Street. I've never done that. Never done that before. Which I can't quite get in, there we go. Um, so 10 threads in here again and really dense colours of, um, of thread with those ones but we use for colours as well so you've got some, some neutrals but you've got some really striking contrast um, colours there as well. So that's £33.99 and there are 10 spools, that's the Essentials Collection unique to Sewing Street. <laughs> And then we have necessities. Do we need so much packaging really for thread? Even these are packaged as well. We have a white, a grey, a cream and a, um, and a black. These are larger spools as you can see. There are four of those for your £35.99 and these are... I was just trying to look how much is on there but it doesn't say. Loads. I think there's 1,200 on each one of those. So they're big spools um, for 35 99 And again, if, you, if you're quilting, if you're dressmaking, you need a strong seam. There's no point in sewing anything with weak seams, is there? So a good strong seam. Oh, sorry, 1,300 metres on each of those. Good strong seam means that your garment's going to last longer and less chance of your thread puckering and causing skipped stitches. So the thing with all these packaging is you take things out and never goes back in there. There we go. Uh, so that's your Necessities Essentials collection. Oh, that one's been opened, doesn't it? So I could have done that. That's the house collection. So what's the difference? Oh, yeah. That's just the same button. It's got one missing because we've been using that one. 
So I needn't have opened that after all, need I? Never mind, it's gone back together nicely. Um, okay. <laughs> um, we have only four metres left now of the navy extra wide backing fabric. This is 280 centimetres wide, so it's almost three metres wide by the half metre. So I wouldn't imagine many of you are just going to buy this unless you're looking at bags and bag linings. I think you're going to be multi-ordering because I think you're going to be making curtains and I think you're going to be backing quilts with this because of the width. It's twice the width that I'm holding out here. Um, and it's only eight pounds and 99 pence. If you multi-order, you're going to have this all in one piece. Um, but if there's eight meters left, that's 16 units you need to order. And that's, that's it, that'll all be gone then. I've got a couple of other colors for you though. When that one goes, doesn't have to be hidden away this one either just because it's a, a backing fabric doesn't mean it has to be on the back or the inside of something it's nice quality we have a silver grey so same size 280 wide by the half meter same price at eight pounds and 99 just different color um, so that's the um, the shadows light grey that's a that's a lovely color I'd use that one a lot and finally we have the sand. Only launched yesterday and we don't actually have very many of these left now. So £8.99 is your price there and that again is by the half a metre. So we have a competition to announce, do we not? There was a competition here yesterday. Uh, we had Fiona in yesterday with John from So Girls. And um, we were doing a little bit of a competition whereby if you bought um, one of her patterns or anything from her hour, you were entered into a competition automatically where you could win some of her products. In fact, these. So cards and prints. We actually have two winners and these are... Joyce Roberts and Christine Babert. Congratulations, we will be in touch with you and, um, and get your prize off to you as soon as we possibly can. Well done to you. Mm. Oh, oh, some of you have received a signed photo of me today. Oh, well done. And some of you have said, where's my signed photo? Um, I'll be honest, I signed a few thousand photos last week, which were going out with the deliveries on my birthday show, which was on Monday, but I didn't sign enough because a few thousand wasn't enough. So I came in really early this morning. I was here at one o'clock um, to sign another 8,000 photos and they're all done and signed. So all of the orders and all of you that didn't get a photo will be getting one very soon. Um, apologies, by the time I got to 7,999, my hand was a little bit like that. So if, if my writing isn't clear, at least it's my writing. Okay, they're on the way to you. Right, um, our getaway fabric, the beach side, was that the beach side or was it the other ones? I think that was it, wasn't it? I've got so many beach fabrics, so many beach fabrics. Um, I know we're almost out of time. Teach, oh no, hang on, that's so upside, oh no. R, R, Y, Y, these ones have been very popular today. Wouldn't that look amazing, fabric in your caravan? Um, little curtains against your window. Maybe you could do a tray liner for your caravan. Um, a little bag to keep your laundry in. We've only got three metres of this one left now. So that's getaway camping on white fabric. It's 5 99 for half a metre. Um, perfect if you are a camper, wouldn't it? Um, you could even cover your deck chairs in it, that'd be nice. Or put some stiffener on the back of it though, you don't want it to give way. And this is the coordinating fabric. So we've got one with mainly caravans and this one is mainly the camper vans. And this is the uh, beachside on white fabric, again at £5.99 is your price there. Shall we have a look at what's coming up tomorrow? You've got Vicky here tomorrow 
and Delphine's going to be in as well. Um, at 8 o'clock in the morning, it's Harley and Friends quilt with Delphine. That's selling already, by the way, um, just to let you know if you wanted to jump ahead on the website. At 9 o'clock, we have fabulous fabrics, darling. At 10 o'clock, the Tilda Runner and Pencil Cushions again with Delphine. Um, Kits Revisited is at 11 o'clock. Now, we're live for four hours every morning, um, but at 12 o'clock, we still have another hour of sewing. So at 12 o'clock tomorrow, it's going to be the Children's Pinafore Dress, which was the show from 8 o'clock o'clock this morning which you can again get ahead with if you didn't see the eight o'clock show this morning do take a look on our youtube channel later on this afternoon and the whole uh, the whole day's programs should be there um, if you didn't see the nine o'clock show hour with my launch of my um, cow creamer fabric panels that should also be there as well or you can have a look on the website for details of that too um, i'm going to see you again bright and early on tuesday morning um, with the early bird at eight o'clock so if, if you can join me then it would be lovely to have your company so i'll see you again then but meanwhile enjoy the rest of your weekend hopefully it's sunny and shine, shine sunny shining where you are and you're going to have a lovely time um, outdoors and i shall see you again very soon bye bye <music>